about a more prosperous tomorrow. A tomorrow where your finances, property investments, property management, accounting, and financial planning are looked after in an exceptional capacity, all under the same roof. When hiring Reventon, you are hiring a team of professionals to support you in your investment and financial decisions. Your future is Reventon's future. So, let's talk about a more prosperous tomorrow today. That's it, I'm done. Cheers, George. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thanks, Abby. Yeah. Thanks, Abby. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for coming in to watch this final tonight. It's the final of a very major event, been the richest tournament that we've had in this country with snooker. In the final tonight we've got Matthew Bolton from Perth, who's uh, always been one of our top players. And we've got James Gibson from Melbourne, who's uh, happy to reach the final for a bit of a drought, but uh, he's going to put on some good show tonight. Referee will be Kim Ivette from Melbourne, and the match will be held over best of seven. Thank you very much. We'll get the match underway. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Steve Mifsud. I'm here with uh, Chris Christoffi. And uh, we're, we're about to commentate on the final of the richest tournament on the Australian snooker, Billies and Snooker calendar, the, the Reventon Commercial Club International. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Steve, and very excited to be here. This is the inaugural international event, and it's actually a very special occasion because the two players contesting the final were actually the same players who contested the 2016 Reventon Masters, which was the inception of the Triple Crown and the first event. So it's actually um, that was a special a, final. That was a fantastic event, Chris. I. Uh I competed in that event that was uh, held at the at the venue in Adelaide. That was that was the first um, event on Masters with the top eight players, I think. I think it was eight or ten, but it yeah. was very the thing that was we did it right before the world title us to give our players some good practice before they go out there and play. It was a good concept, winner take all ten thousand. And, and it, it was a thriller. It was a thriller in Manila. Chris. It was. It was uh, eight eight seven. I watched every shot of that final. <laughs> That's a nice pop for Jimmy to open the account on in the middle. Yeah, it was a real dogfight, that one. It uh, was. Between looks... James and Matthew. And, um, well, it'll be interesting to see if um, the same thing happens here. I'm not sure it's going to be a close contest. Both players had great tournaments. Uh, there was no easy draw, so they both come, tr come through incredibly uh, tough draws. Matthew twice looking like he was out of the tournament, 2-0 down, best of five, and, and fought back like he always does. Well, look, he can't, you got to scrape Matthew off the table, and it is his comeback tournament, so it's good to see him playing, competing again, yeah, and being in another final. he hasn't played since uh, the Nationals last year in August, late August. So it's his first competitive tournament, so fantastic effort to be in the final, and uh, a good chance to win against... Um, against James today. Yeah, that's right, and they're both they're playing for a 14k first prize, so it's a big event, big occasion for both of them. I wish them both well, and best of seven, it's going to be a great match. And it's good to see James back in the final where he belongs and playing well. He's he's played some good snooker to get here, and he's the semi-finals, he's, he's beat, obviously, he's beat yourself and Sean without dropping a frame, so that's no mean feat, so um, let's see what he does in the final. I'm not sure, Chris, what would you prefer? I mean, Matthew's just had that incredible, well, yeah, that was his second fight back. The first one was against Robbie Falvari from 2-0 uh, down, 1-3-2, and he's repeated that in the semi against Joel, 2-0 down, 1-3-2. I think it but, might. Um, you know, that match took a long, long time, yes. Yeah. I'm not sure how long it took, but compared to James' semi against Sean, which was over in a flash. Uh, yeah, so James has sort of had a chance to rest, and yeah, Matthew's virtually back on the table after 15 minutes of playing the semi, so we'll see, see how it pans out. I think Matthew's um, used to playing tough matches and getting. Back on, he's a very tough, hard match player. But as after I think the first frame, they get the, the nerves off. We're in for a great match, and I, 
I have to say, Chris, these tables, as you could probably see and, and the viewers could see from that shot, they are absolutely flying. They are so quick. Uh, it must be just an absolutely fantastic roll of cloth, this, because every player has been commenting how quick the tables are. And uh, you can really play any shot. Uh, you can and see uh, by the reaction there, it's. Yeah. He skewed that very well, obviously, but look how well it came through. So yeah. I think a great big big shout out to Alcox and all his fitters for doing such a great job, Les, especially. He always does all the tables, and it's, I've heard that feedback a lot in this event. I, for, unfortunately for me, I wasn't able to play in this event due to commitments. So I would have loved to have played in it, but all the players are saying it's the, the venue's been great, the tables have been great. So thank you to the commercial club for, first of all, hosting it and also putting up a large sum of money to, to co-sponsor this with Reventon. So we're very lucky to have a, a club like um, Commercial Club here to assist us and what a big event. Well, it's a, you know, it's a favorite venue. And, um, it's a great shot. It's a favorite venue for all of the players, really. Everyone loves coming here. We've been coming here for 30 years, you know, playing the Fred Osborne. And now uh, having your event here, Chris, is just, um, Perfect, really. Sort of halfway in between Victoria and uh, New South Wales. But back to the game. We're, we're getting a bit sidetracked here. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll talk during the frame, I think. That yeah. was a great shot. Well, you can see that shot. He, he hasn't gone into him too hard. It's just cued it beautifully. And the reds are just... They're spread lovely. You know? So that um, shot there, Steve, for the viewers out there, would you play that plane? I think you used a bit of left-hand side there. What, how, would, how would you recommend you play that shot? It's a bit hard to recommend because, you know, when the cloth's new, you need that little bit of check side, or else you'll banana the ball and they'll miss the pack. So when the cloth's newer, you, you need to play it a different way. Um, I was yeah. a bit fortunate there with that result. He's, um, I think on an older cloth, you don't need to put side. You can just top it in and, and you'll get the pack okay. But, um, yeah, James has missed, he's had the best opportunities in this first frame, so he, he'll be disappointed to only have 30 points on the board. Um, he's um, looking good and just missed a couple of easy ones, so... I think oh, it's just know, the he, first you know, frame, maybe? Yeah, there's always nerves in the first frame, but very important in a, in a short match, best of seven to, uh, to win the first frame. Get off to a good start. I've got to say though, I'm, I was speaking to a couple of players a few years ago and I said we'll have a 50 grand event and they, it sounded like a pie in the sky dream. I came last year to Yarraville, had a meeting with Jeffrey Duck and Ed and one year later here we go, 50,000 first event. Um, obviously it's, it's a massive achievement for Australian snooker but I think this is only the beginning. I'd love to see, I'd love to see in the near future a 100k event. And I didn't think, people didn't think we'd have a 50k event. They didn't think we'd have 100 runners and we did both of those within a year. So there's no reason why we can't continue to grow this and make this bigger and better every single year. So that's an exciting prospect for a snooker in this country. Well, I'm very happy to uh, see that the players have supported it and with a, an, an in entry of 107 you know, that's getting back up to the numbers we used to get in the 80s when snooker was in its boom period. And we, you know, we used to get over 100 regularly for the Fred Osborne mem Memorial back in those days, so... That's yeah. what it deserves too. I mean, such a, such a great event. Uh, this would be one of, of the pinnacle events of the calendar. And I remember you once told me, Steve, actually, that if you've won a few... A few Fred Osborne events, it's like winning the national, it was so hard to win and so prestigious that it was actually, it was one of the major events in Australian calendar. I remember at the time Sean, when... Sean Budd called, used to call it the holy grail of uh, Australian <laughs> snooker, because <laughs> it's a huge social event, the dinner, you know, the Calcutta auction of the players. Um, I don't know what that was about, there was a bit of a discussion there and plays stopped tempor temporarily, but... I think they're requesting for better commentators, Steve. <laughs> anyway, Matthew's back at the table, so 
James has left him in a bit of a tricky situation here. It's um, not too easy to play for a clear safety shot. I think he could have a uh, opportunity for a red into the middle, but I think he's just uh, stunning the cue ball. Just for a safety shot behind, behind the black. The black. Yep. It's Thank easy to overrun on these. They're, they're quite quick. He's obviously he's trying to get hard up on that cushion, but just overhead it slightly. So thank you to the, the viewers that are watching. Obviously we're climbing steadily, so please share the link. Please watch the match and um, support the players and the event. So thanks to the people that are tuning in and watching. And it's, it's going to be a great match. So. I'll give you guys an interesting stat. This is the fifth Reventon Triple Crown event. All four of one, the first four of one by Victorian. So can... Matthew Bolton be the first interstate player to win a Triple Crown event, or will James continue the um, tr tradition? Well, and that, sorry Chris, that was very thin. That was such a thin cut. I think you sneaked it on done the very, very well and touching. So stiff really to, to finish where he's finished and not, not be on a colour. Yeah, it is very unfortunate because I mean, he's got the long pink if he just if he's not touching that brown, I don't think so he's on it, Steve. He's not. No, that's what I mean. If you know, if he's, if he's not touching, he's on the pink. He's very unlucky to finish there. Really. Yeah, as you can see, he's trying to put the white there behind the green, so he can obviously cover those two reds. Yeah, yeah so he's obviously touching, it's a touching ball. ball. Yeah. So obviously protecting those two reds is paramount here and keeping the white nice and safe, which he's managed to do. He ideally would have liked it a little bit further out, but it's, that's, that's a, it's a pretty good shot. Personally, it's great to see James, my brother, in the, in the final. He's, uh, he's had a rough trot the last couple of years, hasn't uh, been in the winner's circle, so... And I, I don't really know when his last final was. I know he made the semi-final of the Australian Open last year, but apart from that, it's... Uh he also made the semi-finals of the inaugural Reventon Classic, which Aaron won. He got very close to, to making the final there as well. He just lost to Ben in the semis. Or it was Aaron, I don't remember, but he just lost in the semis in that event as well. So I know he's made a few semis, but I don't remember the last final, to be honest. But he's, he's back where he needs to be. And this is a very special um, trophy as well because no one's ever won it. So, and for me, and yeah. I, I guess there's a little surprise I have at the f at the end of the final. This 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 particular trophy means a lot to me personally. So, um, I hope everyone tunes in and finds out why that is the case. And it is a beautiful trophy which I've had made I think six months ago. So. And, and there's a lot of updates on the ABSC sites and a lot of photos coming out from the tournament which are taken by George Batiris. And um, there's a lot of updates that Alex are putting in as well. So there's um, go through to Reventon Snooker, um, follow us on um, link, not on LinkedIn, on Instagram, Facebook, please. And yeah, like and share those links so we can get our great sport out, out there more. Just a containing safety shot there. But he played it very well. The key, the key there is to keep the white close to the ball, so close to the cushion, sorry, so it limits his options of how to play safe next. So Steve, going back to Australian snooker in general, there's, there's a lot more events now than there used to be, so if we can get our player numbers back up, I think there's some good signs for our, for our sport in this country. What do you think about that? Oh, it's very promising, Chris. And with your generosity in the Reventon group, what, you know what you're doing. What you're doing for the sport is—it's um, never been done before. So I really uh, encourage all players um, to support, and I'm sure the numbers will keep increasing. This has been a great event, and um, that's a good shot. Yeah, the players just love to play in conditions like this. This is this is what we play for. You know, this is 
tables this quick, usually you just um, experience it at um, World Championships, you know, when you get to represent Australia. But these tables are so quick that they're really just a pleasure to play on. So Spectator I think numbers that's, that's Spectators? It's, there's been a few in this event I've seen yeah, in the last few days. Oh, there were some matches this morning, um, even at the last 16, you know, we started at 9 in the morning. So that's a good shot by Matty, but that's a great shot. These guys have been at it for a long time, so we started at 9 a.m. But uh, there was, even for that session, there was a huge crowd. One of them, the, uh, Joel Younger and and Tim Timming match, that, that went 3-2 uh, on the black, and the crowd around that match was oh, I saw that. incredible. That, that was awesome. So, yeah, it's that, been good. It's good to have that sort of atmosphere, I guess, as a player, to be playing... With, with a bit of a crowd, which is good. Makes it a bit more special. <laughs> Just left that over the hole there, I think. That's a well, when a player like Matthew traps you like that and you can't get back to Bork, um, that's probably the best best thing to do is knock in a red like that. So. Great shot by James. Just play a half ball brown here, come behind the green. He's, yeah, it's pretty good. He might have blocked the path. With that brown, I, I if think he has, but I'm not too sure. And he's he's given Matthew a bit of a problem here. So it's sometimes hard to see from this angle when we're commentating. They're seeing the exact angles from behind the behind the shot. It's a bit easier. So uh, if we call the shots wrong, we take no liability in that. I think. <laughs> nah, just to say, it is a bit harder from these angles sometimes. Yeah. Matthew's tried to do the same thing there with a bit of safety in mind. And, uh, I'm not sure if he left anything on in the middle. I don't think so. No, nothing's on. So. Yeah, bit of cat and mouse here to get the next chance. Um, I'm not sure if James will be uh, tempted here. Um, he could play this in such a way to sort of only leave that red on, but no, he's. It's definitely um, taking the safety option. Was it, that's that's the best shot really? Because with the yellow where it is, that um, that gives Matthew a bit of a problem too. If he's thinking about getting back to ball, I think he's looking at that that red. There's a line of three. He's looking at the one in the middle. That that sort of a shot to nothing there. So in a case like that, Steve, the value wasn't there for going for that pot. Was that right? He's probably just better off just. Putting him in trouble, even if he pots the walls. James, is, yeah, James is the previous. Yeah, yeah. He's got a e safety here to come behind the green. Off three cushions. He's well. This is the problem with the yellow and brown down this end. It's only the green they've got to hide behind, so it's going to have to be a really, really good safety or or a good long pot to. Sort of um, to get out of this safety mode here, but uh, I think Matthew's got another shot to nothing here. I think the highest break of the event's one two nine by Vinny. I think it's one two nine. I'm almost sure. I'll just have a look at that. It is one two nine. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic to see Vinny, um, Vinny back and uh, scoring heavy still. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice good pop by Matty. Nice shot. Not on a colour, so I'll um, suggest he's going to tuck him up behind the green here. He's just getting the cue ball cleaned. I think something, um, a bit of chalks on the cue ball or something like that. And Kim Ovet's roughing the final, always does a good job. So if he gets this right, which uh, for a billiard player of Matthew's class, you would expect him to uh, get him right behind the green here. This, uh, could be a dangerous situation for James because it's going to be difficult to. Yeah, he's um. Very difficult to get out of and, and not leave a trouble on. here. So. Although he ha I think he has left that path. Oh, you can see it. Well, yeah. He'll be disappointed right. with that. You're right, Chris. He can. A bit too hard though. It's gone past the ball line. 
As you said, the, the, it looks like the, the table's absolutely flying. I was actually surprised, to be honest, Steve. There was, um, you, you, you self made, you made a century, I think it was 107, 109, uh -huh. 129, and also in the plate, Adrian really made a 122. Yep. I'm surprised there wasn't more centuries, to be honest, with these conditions, especially with the caliber of players that entered. But I think the best of fives might have contributed to that, that the matches were a lot shorter, or, or just short in general. That's a lovely shot. Look at the pace. It's a of great that. shot. That's, Hit it perfect. That's fantastic, yeah. Yeah, I was surprised too, Chris. I expected more, but that I think what contributed to that was uh, a lot of the top seeds going out early. So, you know, Kurt, who's been scoring really well, Adrian Ridley, Daniel Hyanga, these guys are great scorers. Um, I didn't think of that. Was, uh, he's, hit that very, he's hit that too. Half ball. He's given Matt a good chance now to knock a few in. I think he'll play the just follow through for the black. He's run it through, yeah, he's got the angle. I'll stun the bottom one, depends. Yep. Well, definitely a great chance to get back in the frame. I don't know if he can win the frame here, because he's got that last red on the cushion and the yellow on the cushion as well, so... Uh, but it's not, not tricky yet with these three reds. They're quite easy and... The the red, this. the red um, that's not on the cushion, that goes as well, so he's going to get right back in the frame here, but um, just got that problem with the yellow and that other red on the Thank you for everybody commentating as well, sending all their comments in, please keep them coming. So Matthews um, on 16, here. obviously it's probably another three, four reds to follow at least with colours before the, I think the challenge begins, which is the red near the centre pocket. But Maybe a little bit straight on this. He's probably thinking of getting on that red on the rail now because he's straight. Just clearing up those two now. It's the art of brake building. Never really finish straight. Always finish just on an angle. But he's just rolling this through now. So who would have had to get to these reds? Probably just two, three shots after that anyway. So yeah, yeah, it's no problem. This red's on so. He's on, he's on 25 here, yeah, obviously there's a few more to follow. Interesting match, Chris. It was got Matthew who's had a bit of a layoff since August. You got James who hasn't been in the final for a couple of years. So both of them are going to be so hungry to win this. So. And what an honour would be to win the inaugural one as well, to be the first um, uh, international winner. That's would right. be Would be a big thing, I guess. Winning an inaugural event would, I think, make it a little bit more special. I don't know, Steve. You've probably won a dozen of them like that. Um, being an inaugural thing, I think now you won the inaugural Land Chapel. That was the recent, most recent one, I think. Well, it's ironic that the same two players who contested your first <laughs> ever Re Reventon Masters are contesting the first ever Reventon International. So, yeah, well, it's um, it, there's a, there's always kind of a if six to eight players that are always there or thereabouts. And um, and the great thing to see as well with this contest is the contrast in styles, you know, which we saw in that uh, Masters final. With you know, James is more free flowing, and Matthew's uh, quite happy to um, 
wait for his chances and tie his opponent up. So Do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to win. And um, it's both the semis too are funny because you've got two of the toughest players in, in Joel and Maddie playing each other, and yep. two very f free flowing attacking players w between s between James and Sean. So it was two similar styles playing against each other in both matches, and obviously you're going to get one on one, aren't you? So I, think, I think that shot had to be absolutely perfect. You know, he had to just tickle the red and get the cannon right to get it over the middle. It was always a tough shot, so... You don't say this often, but Matty missed the cannon, you know. If Billy would have gone and landed in office, I think. Could have been a lot worse though, because he's... Yeah, it's worked out okay. It's worked out alright. I thought he'd sort of rushed that a bit. It was, wasn't that clear cut, that safety. Just a bit hard to get to get the ball going around when it's so hard up in the angle, so acute, isn't it? He's actually left James a bit of a problem here. It's not that clear cut what to do here. I'd, um, I reckon he'll probably play it off two cushions to land the white behind the black and try to bring the, the red kind of where the nameplate is. I think he might be threading the needle trying that. I think he might just nick it up the rail and... No, we're oh. both, both wrong. Oh, <laughs> that's not bad though. It's not bad. Hey, I absolutely hate these shots, Steve. That's got to be probably the worst when I'm using the spider plane over the white. Yeah, but I think he's going to be snookered next shot. He's got a good target behind the green and brown, so it's just about... Matthew concentrating on the middle of the cue ball here and getting the right contact on the red and he should snooker James here. He's got half the white ball to, to go at. Oh, surprised he went that way, I thought. I think that, that shot was harder than it looks, Steve, the one you were saying to hit it to the right. Yeah. Because he would have played it, but... I think James has a good chance of snooker here. Caught it a bit thin. So it's um, a tight first frame, James 31, Matthew 46 or 15 in front. Just, there's still going to be quite a few shots there with the yellow being pretty much safe. Well, the yellow is the key now in this frame, that, that yellow ball. That's a very good shot by Matty. That's a great shot. I think he's better off going two cushions here. If he goes two cushions, he's got a chance to snoop him back. If he goes one cushion, there's a bit of trouble there, I think. Yeah, that's turned out pretty good. He might still get the snooker, but in a different way. No, he hasn't got the snooker, but... That's a great outcome. It left him in a bit of bother here. So Steve, while I've got you, let me ask you a few questions. So yes, basically the, the main th the main thing that I was the be all debating is the best of five, best of seven. Obviously we're a bit time restricted, but as a player, what um, what do you think the pros and cons are for this event to being a best of seven from the get-go as opposed to a best of five? Obviously, we don't have the tables and the time, but what do you think? Well, for the promotion of the sport, we want runners. We want atmosphere and, you know, good venues like this, we need. We want atmosphere. So the key is getting a, a field of 100 or more. So... Um, you know, I don't mind the best of fives. I, obviously, as a player, I, would, I want a longer matches. But, um, yeah. I th what we saw this weekend was a lot of 3-2 matches on the black, you know, which are great for the spectators. 
they get so exciting at the end. So. That will let me stand. Obviously, it's a much better level of, of, of equaling yeah. a, player, a lesser player beating a better player. We saw it so often, don't we? Like this, this weekend, so many top seeds went out first first round. So uh, Dino Kane, who was you know ex professional, first round. Adrian Ridley, Kurt Dunham. These are all tournament winners you're mentioning too. Yeah. And that's going to happen. Best of five, that's going to happen because anyone can lose a frame. And then you're under pressure. You're under pressure straight away. So, so it's always been the case here at, the, at this venue and with the Fred Osborne Memorial, which has been running for 30 years. It's always thrown up, you know, a lot of exciting matches that, you know, go to right down to the wire. So I, I love hearing that, Steve. You don't get many events that, that have been running for 30 years. And it's, it is. It's a, it's a great thing to say that an event's been running 30 years in the Australian calendar because you wouldn't you wouldn't get that many that are current that have been 30 years, would you? You've got the National, I guess you've got the City of Melbourne, which is now, I guess, the classic, but you've got the Fred Osborne. There wouldn't be that many that have ran for that long with the, I can't remember, maybe a handful. Yeah, the City of Melbourne, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah m not too many. Hopefully it's we can great, change it's that. It's got a great history. You look at the uh, honour board here. The, the um he keeps hit, keeps hitting it to square up. It's, it's not that easy because he's hard up. Yeah. You look at the past champions. Neil, Neil's up there. You know, it's it's fantastic. You look at. Uh, I love looking at that um, that honour board. Remember those matches over the years that, that have happened here. A lot of. You know, they're good tests of character, those tight matches. Let uh, me test your stats, always, Steve. Always. How, how many three times winners have we got here? I think there's only two. Paul Belzer and uh, Joel. Is that right? That's correct. He's got him. There's a, there's, a few, there's a few that have had two. Quite a few, but yeah, no one's hit the four mark. That's a good shot. Any hit that. I don't know. What's the outcome? Oh, it's Half a chance for Matthew. He's 24 up as well, so. So basically, it's um. Wonder if you'll move the pink here. Screw into the two colours or roll down. Yeah, he's got a couple of options really. You can stun, just miss the pink and stay on the black. You can roll through and stay on the black. It's quite natural to do that. <coughs> Play your shot. It's probably the easiest just to run through, but if you screw into the balls, you can hit it with, I think, a bit more firm. Nice yeah. part. That's a great pot. Nicely on the black. And a good angle to hit the yellow as so well. So 25-32. James needs two snookers. And um, very difficult to um, get two snookers, two fouls out of Matthew. So I'm not sure if well, he's going to knock this yellow out. And mm. I'm not sure if that pot's Chris. I, I don't I think it I goes I think a pot was very difficult though with the white there. Um, 33 in front, so as, as you said, two snookers, it's not gonna, it's a mean feat to do that to anyone, never mind Matty. Yeah, the in offs are in the middle, so he's either got to jack up and screw this in, or... Play safe. Play safe, yeah. And a lot of snooker coming up, Chris. Yeah, there is. A lot of snooker coming up. And in the consolation play, we've got um, Kurt Dunham awaiting the winner of uh, the other semi which is Stan Gorski playing Stephen Donahue. So I think, yeah, Matthew, going back to this match, Matthew potting the yellow, I think that's pretty much frame one. Yep. So that's first, first blood goes to Mr. Matthew Bolt from WA. I think they both had their chances, but obviously being the first frame, it might take them a while to, to get going. He doesn't look too tired after a semi, does he, Steve? That's 
it's once a good you, first I fight. think once you get to the final, it doesn't matter what's happened. It makes no difference what's happened before. So It's a good first frame. There's a few misses, but obviously a bit of tension being the first frame. So Especially the final of an, an event like this, Chris, with the um, you know, first of its kind, 50,000 prize money. Uh, both players have to be up for it. Absolutely, 100%. So next next frame is crucial for James. I feel like he's got to got to get the next frame and uh, settle into the match. And our numbers are climbing quite a bit, Steve, since in the finals, so please keep sharing the link. Um, we're now up to 139 watching. There you see Mr. Gorski playing Stephen Donahue in the semi. The winner awaiting Kurt Dunham. Legend of Australian snooker, Stan. Won every tournament around. He's won this a couple of times as well. Three times Australian champion. Run runner up in the world amateur to Stuart Bingham in New Zealand. Yeah, he had a very tough semi that year. I remember he played Joel. That was in '96. Obviously, Bingham's one of um, one of a few players to win the world amateur and then win the world professional. Um, it was Ken Doherty. Perfect was the first, and Perfect. then Stuart Perfect Bingham was the second. Yes, it was. So there's only two players that have ever done that, Steve, that have won the amateur and the professional. Good day to Mr. Michael Boyne. That's a question how many internationals? There's only a few internationals plays because uh, we did have a few more, but one didn't get their visa. So next year we're hoping to get a lot more. We had a guy from Denmark come out. We had dinner, came from New Zealand. And um, we're going to have a few players coming from India, but they are coming in the next two weeks. We have the Reventon Classic, which also has two billiard events in the back of that. So, yeah, from that perspective, we would have liked a few more international players, but. We're going to get a lot more in the future, but thank you and keep the questions coming. Lovely safety shot by James there. Got his line perfect. Just a dump shot by Matthew. He Possibility did. of a very thin cut here. A bit risky, but he might sneak through that gap there. He takes it on and head down to the ball colours. Might be worth a go. He's definitely taking it on. Yeah, we snuck through the gap. Is Close. it hard enough? Yeah, he's yes, it is. Yeah. He's played that well. Nice shot. Okay. So he's got a nice green here to finish on that, that red. There's probably only two more loose reds, so he's got to, you know, think about going into the pack soon. How he's going to go about it. He's, he's played that well. It's cute and nice. I'd like to see a couple of big breaks from both the boys in the final. He obviously definitely guaranteed to see a great safety play. It would be nice to see a few big breaks as well. Um, Ken, uh, Larry just confirmed in Ken also won the juniors and the only one to win the two mentioned by Chris, Ken Doherty, that's correct. But we're talking, yes, that's what we said, Ken Doherty and Stuart Bingham. But, but he won the Junior World as well, oh, there you go. He did, I was there when he won it. <laughs> there I you go. I was in uh, Reykjavik. Wow, that's lovely. He's uh, that's that's lovely. cued that beautifully and obviously that's possible to, with having such great clots as well, you don't have to hit the ball as hard. And it reacts a lot better, but he's, he's cued that awesome. 
And the funny is actually, I don't know if it's a good omen or James is wearing his uh, mask, the shirt, which on, on the bottom sleeve it's got, he competed in 2018 and he won it in 2016, it says it on the bottom of his sleeve and he's one of the few players that have played in all three Masters events as well, so there you go, there's another little stuff for you, Steve. One shot, he's gone into the pack there. He's really, um, this is what you see when you're playing such fantastic cloths. Just one good opener like that, and everything's on. So it's just a matter of keeping tight control now with the cue ball, and he um, can rack up a few points here. And uh, that's a good shot. Is the blue one in the center pocket there where the red is, Steve? Yes. I couldn't tell from, the, from this angle. I think he's going to run this off two cushions. I'm not sure if the cue ball probably got away from him a little bit there. I don't think he wanted to finish this straight. So I think he's going to play follow through off two cushions. So. He's got all the cue power, so it's not really an issue for James. He just, he just no issue at all. He, he hits the ball so well, he hits right through the ball. so. It looks gone up for that red. I'm surprised. I thought he's just going to come off to for the bottom red in the bottom of the bunch there. But uh, yeah, he's played that lovely. The only thing he might have gone a little bit too far. I'm not sure if he can hold for the blue or not. So he's wrong side the blue. Yeah. See, so just when break building, if you just finish slightly straight on the black like that, it makes the world a difference. If he didn't do that, he'd still be around the black. And he's he's going to have to go in and out of I two cushions now, bottom right, to come before the red here. And he's, played that he's, he's, he's played that very well. It's on his wrong side, so he's going to have to use the rest. So I always forget that because I'm a right-hander, so I look at that shot and I think I'm on it. It does make it a lot harder. Looks like he's just floating this in. He's oh, cued that push. well. I think he's landed a little bit. He's straight landed again. straight again, so it's going to cause him a bit of trouble. Actually, looking at the other screen, he's got he's got a little bit of an angle. I don't think it's. I think it's okay if he's straight, Chris. I think he's got that red yeah. into the same pocket. No, he's running through. I can see from the other screen, as you could see there. He's, he's uh, uh, out of position here. Yes. Look, he's at 42, and I think a good safety here is what's going to be the order of the day. Oh. Sorry, we just got a bit of commentary that um, one of our volumes down the other guy's deafening. Sorry about my voice being deafening. I am Greek, so I have a very loud voice, so I'll try to keep it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ethnic. <laughs> Kim Busby, how are you? And the other guy is Chris, by the way. Thanks for tuning in and watching. No, that little clip on the black there has left that red on. Sorry, I got distracted. I think James got a bit lucky there, didn't he? He hit the jaw of the middle and got Matthew behind the brown. On his safety shot. Nice spot from James into the middle there. That was a great shot. Nicely onto the pink. Uh, the question is what goes here? Does that can he thread the needle there and land on that red? He might have to come off the cushion with a little bit and come back into the back into the red. <laughs> Thank you for your comments, Mick Mick Boyne. Um, don't don't go knocking uh, Ted Lowe. He's an absolute legend of the sport. 
I think he was more complimenting him and putting in the same way. Just bring Ted Miss said we love it. We're enjoying the commentary. We hope you guys are. Please bring your keep your suggestions coming through. Is he? He's on that bottom red, isn't he? He is. Yeah. The bottom one. Yeah. I well thought he was threading the needle and and uh, finishing yeah, the bottom of the one. pack. I meant. Yeah. Yeah, that one there. Yeah. So he's trying to screw back and get on the black. He's, he's cute, that noise. Lovely. Even though they kind of open, they're kind of all covering each other as well, so that's it's got a bit of work to do. Beautiful shot. He's, he's had nice, to hit that nice pretty control. perfect, yeah. Now he's got the pink and the blue to go, go at here, so he's got a lot of margin for error and you think he'll, I think he'll go for the pink, but he's also got the blue as well. 16. So James needs two more reds and uh, to make this frame safe. It looks like he's pretty much forgot about the first frame. Sorry, one, one more red. So yeah, 67. Yeah. So he's played. He's pretty much forgot about the first frame. He's queuing very well, and he shot. He shot Matty out this frame pretty well. Had to do it, Chris. Just best of seven. You don't want to go 2 0 down to uh, someone of Matthew's class. So. Well, you said it was a very important frame. He's, he's under hit that qu quite a bit. He's probably about s six inches short, but he, he, this is, he is left handed, so he should be fine. The amount of hours I've seen that Q action, ever, I know every single bit of James's Q action, the amount of times I've played with it. So um, if he pots this brown, that makes it um, one snooker required. Nicely on the red now. So from yeah. James's point of view, he'd want to just kill the frame here. Yeah, he'd want to he'd want to clear up here and uh, stamp his authority and, and let Matthew know that. Uh, He's here to play this final. Yes, and you know, there's no, there's no way Matthew's given that frame up with 67. Yeah, the different 68 up. Yeah, that could just add, add another 15 half hour minutes, or whatever, 20 15, minutes, but 20 minutes to the frame. So I think it's more the rhythm, though. That's um, the thing keeping Matty off and scoring another 20 points is. Keeping the game flowing, it, I think it work, would be worked at James's advantage. Now this obviously was is counterintuitive to him winning the frame so easy. I think. So Matthew opens those three reds up so to make the uh, and plays a beautiful snooker as well at the same time. So it's the commentary. James is queuing beautiful, but he just sits. Mick, he spoke too soon because he missed that ball, but I do agree he is queuing beautifully. I think maybe he took his off at a little bit because he was ahead of the line, but it's going to be a great match nevertheless, and it's still got a bit more time. He's swerving this now. Yep, nicely played, but I think that leaves Matthew in to get his uh, four blacks and start snookering on that last red. What a difference that one red makes at 68. You, you're into frame three now, it's one all. Yep. As opposed to, yep. even though he's still a hot favourite to win it, it just changes the whole flow of the match. You've got a big kick there. As you can see, he's asking for the cue ball to be cleaned. I'm not sure about hot favourite, Chris. One snooker is not, you know, especially with Matthew's billiard skills. It's um, All right, maybe maybe not made just lately. How about favourite? Mm. Favourite, well, yeah. He's, you know, he's in control of the frame really now, I think. Um, but the reds the way they are, he's going to get all the blacks he needs and possibly lay a snooker behind the pink here. It's... And he won't be just thinking of getting the snooker, he'll be trying to put the red near a colour and uh, try and get the free ball. Yeah. It's a big two weeks of snooker. You've obviously got the international in two weeks. You've got the Reventon Classic. So much snooker as well. Which next is few weeks. And, and then you've got two big, great billiard tournaments as well. At the end of that, you've got plays from India coming. I don't know if Pancash is coming. I don't know. Would you know if he's coming, Steve? 
I don't know yet. No, uh, I heard he's trying to come or he wanted to come, yeah. so it would be great to see all the Indian players over. They usually support our events. So that's... Uh, we have the current World Billiards Champion com confirmed for that event, so... Who is the current World Billiards Champion there? Surav Kathari from India. So any billiards awesome. enthusiasts out there, get down to the... Uh, Reventon Academy in um, 175 Stephen Street there. In about three weeks time you're going to have some of the best billiard players in the world playing there. That's a, yeah, it's going to be a great 10 days of snooker slash billiards and you've obviously culminating into one of our billiards, the national billiards which is a... Um, and it's going to be timed billiards so it's not going to be 150 up. Do uh, they do both though at the same time? There's no more 150 up, so they're going to play time, so there'll be some really big breaks made. I look forward to see you, you're playing in that event, Steve. Well, or there should, yeah, we're we'll looking forward to, and all the Indian players always come, always well prepared for that event. Yeah, Peter Gilchrist, the and legend. Peter Gilchrist, from I forgot Singapore. about that, yeah. He'll be there, Rob Hall from England. You know, these guys, well, Peter holds the highest. He's got a world record high break of uh, 1,300. Yeah, I heard, yeah. So How cool is that? We're going to have him We're going to have him in our own club in, in mm. Australia. So what a thing. It's, it's exciting times for Australian snooker. Yeah, so the next three weeks are fantastic. And billiards. All Q sports in general. It's, it's where our sport belongs to be with international players, big events, big money prizes, good exposure, and it's, it's really good to see. I had a very exciting call from an next player, an Australian champion, Mr. Duff, Craig Duffy. So if you're out there, there's a few, a few, a few things that we're discussing together for the sport. I'm not going to say many more than that, but there's a few um, ideas that Reventon's going to announce in the next two, three years, which is going to be even bigger for our sport. So I'm very excited about the prospect of our sport going in there, continuing to go in the right direction. Oh, so here we go. One red left. So we did have some commentators. Michael said, I think the round robin is timed and the knockout is 150 up about the billiards. I can't confirm that, but um, thank you for sending that in. I'm not too sure, but either way, I know that there is the, the national there as well, and we do have all the international players. So whatever it is, it's going to be a great event, so pl come down and watch it and play in it if you're if you're a billiard player or snooker player. So tucked up behind the pink. Well, no, he's actually has got the that. Blue, got the red near the blue. I don't think he's got it. I don't think he's got that. That's actually... It's, it's yeah. You wouldn't expect Matthew to make that error. It's only, even if he can't say it's a small swerve, that was a good chance for him to really put him in trouble there. Yeah, I fully... I don't know if he got a bad contact or what happened there, but I fully expected James to be touching that pink with Matthew's touch. But Yeah, so it's, um, it all comes down to that red on 68, 68 nil, and this is the position now. Mm. Now, obviously, he's just probably run this through and leave the, leave the white behind the pink. I'm not too sure. That's, from the angle, that's probably, and put the red where the black is. Could be stunning it across. The black. Half ball red. Stunning it across, yep. yeah. He's, I think he's, he's, oh, he's played that well. Yep, perfect. He's, actually, that's a, he's got the middle pocket there, which is going to give James a lot of trouble. So I do take that comment back, Steve, for the, the hot favourite. Obviously, it's... it's got to get a lot of side on this. Yeah, he's done that. Get out. Oh, I tell you, James is hard to oh <laughs> Mr. Becky. What if I've got a snooker out of that? He, I think he got, oh my God, he got wow. the snooker like it's... That is incredible. It's a very tough shot to play in that one. <laughs> wow. It's... Wow. <laughs> I think James... You don't see James jump off on a shot, but I think he knew he was in trouble there when he saw that cue ball <laughs> heading for the brown and the, oh my the green. So that, that is one in I don't know how many hundreds to land in the lip of the pocket and the snooker in. That's a tough... Did you teach him that shot? Matthew stuff? is very impressed with that shot. 
Yeah, judging by his body language. I know, I know that I'll be absolutely livid. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, we we have a result of that match in the consolation plate. Steve Donahoe has beaten Stan Korski. He's hit that. That's a great shot by Matt, he's I'll tell you. I don't know if he's got the sneak, but that is an amazing... I think he's... Oof. That is so unlucky that he's what left. A fantastic left shot to hit that. He is. A, he's been very unfortunate there, but... Um, well, you know... The there balls you seem to have a bit of memory in, at this game, and I think James is a bit lucky to get away with this now. Um, after breaking down there on 68 to nil up, but uh, he's got his frame on the board, that's and uh, it's a sigh relief for James. Settle him down a bit. And I have a very good friend of mine, commentator, fellow Les Higgins, where um, I think it was five nationals between me and Les and three. Oceanas, which he's won all of them. I think he's getting a bit jealous that you're on the thing with me, Steve. Les, I hope you're well, mate. Hope the family is well, and I'll see you soon. And thanks for tuning in, buddy. Another legend of the sport. And an absolute legend of the bloke as well. That's the well, yeah, <laughs> that's what James has been doing this tournament, so I'm sure his supporters would uh, love to see a bit more of that. Free-flowing, attacking... He's, he's a very clean potter. When he's playing well, his long pots, they don't hit the jaws. They, most of them, obviously, some do. But he's a very clean potter most of the time. They're just centre of the pocket and he just cues them so well. I saw him against Sean, but he's just knocking the long balls. Centre of the left pocket. Left-handers, Chris. Left-handers. Do you think it's too late for me to start playing left-handed? Oh, look, Walter... 40 years? Wal after 40 years? Walter changed his hand, so I'm sure <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> um, it's just... It's it's also it's great to watch, but also sickening as a player to watch because it. It's just I know something how about. That is. It's just something about them when you watch a left hander. It's just. Yeah. It's annoying, isn't it, when you're a right hander? Yeah. It's it's. We sort of use our brain a bit, and they're just letting their body just do its thing, autopilot, and away they go. It, yeah, they tend to be, and um, I got a f uh, well done to um, Ian McCulloch, who wasn't at this event. He called me, said he really wishes he was here. I'd love to see one of our events soon. He's a great player. He just won the Masters, so well done on winning the Australian Masters. Great achievement, and um, one of um, one of my favourite players on the circuit. I love watching him play because his style of play, and um, hope to see you soon in one of our events. Fantastic guy. I represented Australia with him at uh, the World Championships uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, great guy, and wonderful killers too. Uh, on, on, what a great on, player. Honestly, watching him play is one of my favourites to watch the way so he, the, the style he plays, the way he cues the ball when he made the three centuries. And the, I just love watching him. And, yeah. and what a gentleman, too. He calls me up to tell me, Chris, I'm sorry I can't play. I will be one of your events. And obviously, there's no need to do that. But I said to him, our, our, our tournament will be a lot better having you in there because of course, yeah. obviously being such a good player. So hope to see you soon. And it's one all, so one we're all. effectively best of five for the inaugural Reventon Commercial Club International. Again, thank you to Eddie, all the work you've done, Jeffrey Duck, for approving, obviously, all the funding. Uh, Therese and all the officials here, all the referees, for putting this great event. And, yeah, it's yeah, special, everyone involved. Special mention to the referees, Chris. They, they do a great job. They spend a lot of money to come and support these events and referee for us, you know, to travel around. And We're grateful. And thank you, Dan Lynch, for always doing a great job on for bringing everything live and coming to Albury to do this for me, so thank you. So it's, we've got a great team of people that, that, that are behind our sport, so it's our job now to take it to the next level and, and bring it to the Australian public. Good luck to um, Kurt As you see and now, to Steve. Yep, Kurt and Steve Donohoe. Best of five. Final of the plate, best of five. For the winner, $3,000 for the winner of a plate. Biggest plate in Australian history, 8000 And that's only going to get bigger as well. So good luck to both players. And it's kind of best of five and best of five. So let's see who finishes first. <laughs> Tell you what, I drove up in the morning to get here for this, this event because I couldn't play in it and I was... Good to walk into a room buzzing 
yeah, good atmosphere and I was unfortunate I couldn't see all of it but I was very glad to drive up to to make it to see these events so I had to get up at five to come up which is a lot later than I usually do but still it was it's good to be here very enjoyable event Chris and uh, fantastic atmosphere all weekend and also you know thanks to Kim for her efforts in uh, refereeing this final she's doing a wonderful job And one thing that I am seeing, uh, which I'm very, very happy to see, there's, I know that you're coaching down the Reventon Academy, I know George is coaching down there, and I've, I helped out once, but that there is juniors from schools coming in and playing, and getting juniors in the sport and walking down our club, it, it gives me such a good feeling knowing that we're potentially looking for the next Neil and for the next, our next world champion, and grassroots is where every sport's at, that's the, the blood that's the blood for, of any sport so it's, it's really good to see and hopefully we've got our next champion around the corner definitely a big misjudgment there from Matthew um, way too thick on that one hit it half ball yeah and he's you know really opened those reds up so looks like James is having a go at this red down the rail Tough shot, but he's he's going for it. He's left the red in the centre pocket here. I don't think, or he can maybe, I don't know if he can go through the gap and land on the blank. So you've got a special prize, Chris, in this tournament for a maximum break. Yes, we do. We have um, we have quite a few incentives for the Reven for the Reventon Triple Crown. There's 5k for the maximum, which I'm looking at trying to do an insurance thing with a car. There's also 5,000 if you don't drop a frame. Would and you uh, would you have a crack here? Me, always. In this situation. Yeah, I'll. I'll, I'll the reds be. are pretty good. I always attack everything that I do in life, Steve, to the maximum. <laughs> I'll probably hit about eight or nine here, but still, I'll, I'll always go for it. Yes, I'll get five grand from my bank account. I'll put it back in there, but still, we'll give it a go. <laughs> and there's also ten thousand dollars if someone successfully wins all three of the Reventon Triple Crowns in the same year. So there's some big prizes: a thousand dollars for a maiden century. Yep. And another another big thing, I think, the winner of this event gets direct entry into the Reventon Masters. So that's a big thing as well. So they qualify directly yep. for the winner take all, which this year is going to be seventeen thousand for the winner. So it's it's like a double bonus. But I do believe, no matter which one of these two gentlemen win, they're going to qualify anyway. Because yeah, I can't see them yeah. not qualifying. Hundred percent. You're looking at uh, the top four, if not both top eight, depending on their day. Top four, if they're both playing well, or they're two of our best players. He's given him a good chance here, Steve. It was a it was a attacking shot, but one that I thought he was going to. He's, he's flying well. He's going to go for it. If he gets it, he's in. He's in for these shots. So, our viewers have climbed again. So again, keep showing the link. Keep passing it on. These balls are lovely, Chris. These are absolutely lovely, aren't they? I mean, <laughs> just take a look at it. It's I'm yeah. just thinking, I hope this doesn't cost me five grand, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's only that red on the side cush there. And, um, I'm only joking. I'd be more than happy to, to see somebody achieve that feat. It would be, a, it would be massive. Yeah, it's not really on the cush, so if you land behind it, there shouldn't be a problem to drop that in, so... Tell you what, these are really, really nice. Not gonna, I'm not gonna ask you, Steve Winner, because obviously it's your brother. But give me a scoreline. I always put Les on the spot, and I'll give you mine after that. Give me a prediction. I'm not telling you who. Predict a scoreline for me. Yeah, 
scoreline. Mm -hmm. I have to say 4-3 in this match. Cool. The way this tournament's gone and that that many deciders has to be 4-3. I was going to say that too, but just for the sake of being different, I'm going to go 4-2. Well, that's, um, that's four blacks. I'm pretty sure we're going to see another black come up here. and uh, Yeah, the balls are looking really good and just about keeping close control now. And Larry, you got a, good, a great question up there. You said, just to be Benanti, Chris, you can't be snookered by a cushion. I don't know about that. I think you can be, but oh, I don't know. I've never, no one's ever posed that question. Um, Steve, your thoughts. Can you be snookered by a cushion? I think you can be. Um, I think Larry's talking about the wording in the b rule book there, so oh. I think that's right. I'm not, you know, Larry, please the send amount in. of times that Steve Mifsud's read the rule book on snooker. Um, Zero? That's a very good guess, Chris. So. <laughs> I'm about the same. Larry, please confirm what you mean by that question. I think you can be snookered. Are you referring to the rule book? Please send it in. Meanwhile, Maddie's on five reds, five blacks. And the reds are looking pretty good. And Michael, thanks for your nice comment. Yeah, what a wonderful opportunity this is. Really, really good chance. Looks like he's just got enough angle to Oh, he's, he's gone for the pink. Okay. Well, too straight. Obviously, too straight and running into red, so. Well, I think the, the $5,000 bonus is safe now, Steve. It's okay. You're, you're okay, Chris. Vinny, Vinny, if Vinny Calabresi is watching though, he's uh, 129 could be in a bit of danger here. Yeah, actually, yeah. It's Once Matthew uh, gets past 72, he'll relax and can't see too much trouble after that. And this is the third shot of the frame, isn't it? Break, James went for it and bang, Matthew's in. So good quality snooker in the first few frames. So we've had our answer to that question. So in the rule book it says you um, you can be obstructed by a cushion, but under the rules it can't be called a snooker. Okay, well that's that's good because we weren't going to read the rule book. So thank you for sending that in, clarifying it, guys. I've read a bit of it now, so <laughs> that's as far as it goes for us. <laughs> That's funny. I got a comment doing a Ronnie O'Sullivan and getting a 146, not enough money. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's a classic. Well, you know what? Maybe next year we'll put 100,000 drachmas. I don't know if that will help. And Larry, thanks for confirming. It's referring to the rule book. Again, I don't think anyone read the rule book out of the players, Larry, but thank you. 
We've got great riff to confirm us of the rule, to remind us. Can you hear us? He's on a break of 70 here, so he's still on a potential 144. So this red, this 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 black, sorry, and uh, frame will be safe. So um, yeah, the next frame is going to be crucial again for James to. Uh, well, it's crucial for both players. To Three one or or two each after this, so huge frame coming up after this. That will be. I um, don't think he could do much. So he's on. He's going to need a big pot in it, but he's going to need a lot of massive shots to to put that highest break at risk. Yep, that's seventy seven. Is it in? No, he's just got it in the middle. Hasn't got the legs. Two snookers required, or uh, one very good snooker and a free ball. 73 behind, 67 ups. One. Nice shot in the centre. Snooker the second and third frame. Yeah, it's been quite a quick flow on the first three frames. We've been going for an hour and twenty, but the first took a bit longer. Now it's they're speeding up, scoring, scoring well. Uh, poor positional shot there. So he would have loved to get two more reds with blacks, and then. Get that last, get snookering on that last red, but he's possibly going to play a double here. In she goes, lovely shot, <laughs> nicely onto the black. I'm not sure if he needs to stun this or it's natural from the angle we've got. Um, might be able to run, run it off the cush. I think he's got all the options. There. It's you can yeah. run it off, you can stun it, you can... Yeah, it might be going up for that red. Yeah. Down for the black. I mean, the ball's in pretty good position, Chris, for snookers, with the brown where it is. And you come behind the cushion, you're going to put him in trouble, aren't you? Mm. Not that he'll play that shot now, but I think he'll just run this through well, our viewers two cushions. <laughs> oh, one cushion and try and get this cue ball behind the black. Uh, we've climbed up to 176 viewers. Vinny's joining us now. How are you, Vinny? Good to see you back on the circuit, buddy. How's his weight? How is his weight? That's pretty good. His weight's pretty good, Steve. I lately. He's, he's you, you're good. How's <laughs> his weight? And Matthew appreciates that shot. He's put him in all sorts of bother. Wow. 
surely he has to go, well, he's got a couple of options. He can go two cushions and just get past the pink with a bit of running side. This is missable. Probably doesn't even need side if he goes past that pink. I know he's a great player and that this is missable. I expect him to hit it, but it yeah, is missable. you always expect Matthew to get out of snookers, but... I don't think that's it. Yeah, no, he's, he's hit that. Oof. <coughs> James taps to the table. Hey. Well, he's worked something out. I couldn't really see anything clear cut here. I'm trying to get behind the black again. Yeah. I'll look at this for a shot. Look at this. That's a, that's a great that's a shot, ripper. mate. And well acknowledged by Matthew. That's a ripper. And Vinny's officially back to win high break prizes. He's just commented, well, it's a pretty good high break, Vinny, so I reckon it's going to be a 130 in the deciding frame. What do you think about that, buddy? One cushion here. Yeah, no, never in doubt. Well, he's, here's where that brown's going to come into play. Maybe he can... The only thing is if he can get, avoid the yellow with the red. <laughs> can he play this through behind the, the, the um, yellow here, Steve? Yeah, I think he can. But I'd probably be wanting to... No, he's playing your shot, Chris. I'd probably prefer to get behind the brown because if you nail it, then you're really cutting out all the angles. I thought if he plays it off two cushions and come from... Oh, he's playing yours. There you go. Oh, he's, oh, he's played it well. Good to see you, good to see you back in the, in the circuit, Vinny. You miss your banter and um, seeing you on the table, mate. Well, I think this is a bit of a ripper, Chris, this snooker. Because this the blue is... Ball. Um, he's the got green traffic. ball. He's got traffic here, so... I think it's only the one cushion. He's got to go ball cushion and this up the table. This is a very tough shot, isn't that's, it? That's that's a tough one. Jimmy's put him in all sorts of bother there. Unless he's thinking two cushions. So just up past the ball line, just below the middle pocket, and then onto the red. They're the only two I can see. Yeah, he's looking at that line there. The only thing that I, I guess is consolation is that it's 41 points. That's a couple snookers because yep. as long as he lands on this side, he's not going to leave a free ball. Yeah. If he waits the the ball right. Yeah. He's pretty cool. But you play it slow, then you you're going to leave James in ideal position for another snooker. So. Blue ball. Free ball, no? No, no chance. He's, you see, it's very hard there. Yeah, but sometimes, you know, the balls are in certain positions, like that brown is just it's sort of like two balls where it is, you know, it's not, it's just in an ideal spot. It's quite a good target. He's, he's well, he's tried to get him behind the black there, but he's got him behind the blue, so... He's hitting this all that long though, isn't he? Mm, well, it's hard to say from the angle we have. He might even be able to hit it direct. No, no, he's got coming off the ball cushion with a bit of side. Yeah, that's snooker back. And Always a chance when you're hitting that ball, isn't it? Yes, with, that's actually... With someone, you know... Matthew, with Matthew's billiard knowledge, he's probably thinking of snookering back in the, that situation. Yeah. I think he left this up. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Let's frame over. Let's frame. That's two. I thought James might have played the wrong shot there. I thought he might have tried to get him behind the brown on that red. Stunning. Yep, 2-1. One. One.
just cleaning up now. Just elementary colours now. It's pretty much getting ready for the fourth frame. James won't be coming back here. Mm. Oh, fantastic. 188 people watching. That's 191. Keep, keep coming, guys. Doing good. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying the streaming and all the event now. Nothing in it in the first frame of the plate. Kurt Dunham's five points in front. I think they're uh, ready to go for the fourth frame now in the final. Um, we'll keep you updated on progress of that uh, consolation yep. plate final. Frame four. But back to the big one. We perfect break off from Matthew. So that's the second or third perfect break on the fourth frame. We've had a f um, how many people are watching is a question we've been asked by. Um, we've got about 50 people, I'd say, within the snooker room. Uh, but it's a big room and they're scattered between both of the matches, so we're hoping that will pick up. And there's 170 now watching live, so they're the current numbers. We had a local newspaper come out to take photos of for the event, which is very good for our sport. Hopefully we can get a lot more of that exposure. And for everyone watching, there's a Reventon hat trick series which is playing on next week at the Reventon Snooker Academy. It's open for one more night. Um, if if you're eligible, please enter. And if you're obviously helps if you're Victorian, but if you're not, and you want to come down. We welcome more players. And obviously spectators and sponsors. We welcome everybody. <laughs> So James has gone for that long red. And I think he's left Matthew a nice little chance here to get back back in. This red cuts into the middle. Nicely onto the black. He's played it well, but it was, was overcooked too. He came off the top rail pretty fast there. Yeah, yeah possibly got a bit of a bounce. this with screw and left hand side to uh, come around and get to that red near the pink. Another comment saying well done to uh, Kim doing a great job of freeing. We, we totally agree with that. She's done a great job in all the event. Who has the best tables in Australia to play on? That's a great question. Um, I'm going to have to be biased and say the Reventon Snooker Academy but that's obviously being biased. Um, who would have the best tables to? Uh, I think it's just uh, a bit difficult to say. Uh, I wouldn't really want to say because we've got many great venues in Australia, but uh, whenever the cloth is uh, just being put on and, and new like this, and, you know, it's championship cloth, and, you so know, it's the table's going to play 
beautifully. So, so it's table de it's dependent mainly on the conditions. So we do have great conditions everywhere. Steve being very diplomatic in Switzerland, I'll say currently it's looking like this venue, but it's whoever's got the cloths that the cushion's been recloths and we've got some great people to do that. All Cox and Thompson who did this event and prepared it. it a, a lot of it's based on that. It's also based on the, the weather conditions of the room and, and so on and so on. But mm. you've also got another um, <laughs> association of South Australia well done. Keep the comments coming, guys. So Maddie's currently on 16 now. He's landed a little bit short of that, but just play the play the red down the corner where the green is, and just bring the the white back a little bit to land on the black to um, give himself an angle to go into the bar. You think this is a plan by James to let Matthew go ahead? It's good just to think he's been coming back from two 0 down a lot, so just to increase the viewers, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, he's, um, that's a great shot. I mean, he's won. Yeah, he's just over screwed it slightly, so he's to dig right into this, doesn't he? You know, tough black from there. And yeah, if he can, if he can catch that that ball he just queued at, if he can catch that. So the one Half to the right ball. of it. Yeah. I think the cue ball will go off the side cushion and come out nicely, so... It's all about this contact on, on the red now. Tell you what, he's played that played absolutely it with yeah. perfect. Played it, played it well. Um, you could play that like, the, like that or go right into him, but you can't argue with that outcome, can you? Well, I thought he would have. Oh, I thought he would have played that with a bit more pace. Either screw into him and open him up, or even play the shot he played, but play it with more pace and open a few more reds. I think he'll have to go into him again here. There's, there's nothing on there. So, regardless of the outcome of this tournament for Matthew, I think he'll be very, very, very proud of his uh, performance after coming back after a year and making a final even win, win, win or lose, obviously he wants to win, but I think he'll be quite happy with the showing that he's had in this event, coming back from 2-0 a couple times against quality players. Just tried the gentle cannon there, but... Uh I'm wrong there. Is it a tough shot though? Because you have to get absolutely perfect. Yeah, I needed to get just a touch more right hand side, and it would have been nicely on that red. But I think he might have missed the trick there with his break building. You should have. He had a couple of opportunities to spread those reds, yeah, and just, just chose to pick them off, pick them off. But you know, he had two good chances to to get them open there. And the thing is, when you're playing that shot, if you don't hit it perfect when you're picking them off, you've got you're already out of options. Yeah, yeah. But he's got his man under pressure. Two one up. Thirty to thirty two to nil. So James just rolling into the pack here. Yeah, looking at the field these days, since obviously there's more events and more prize money, that's good to see. You've got a lot of pl old players coming back into the game that haven't picked up a queue for a few years. I know it's been a few, but Joel's come back in. Obviously, Sean, as you know now, you see Vinny back. Dino Kane comes. Of course, he's competing a lot more. There's a lot of... It's really good to see. Fairbrother was in this. Obviously, he's still playing, but... It's oh, it's the, by far the best field we've had for anything, Chris, for, for some time, so... Absolute quality. Seeing ten Absolute potential quality. winners of an event. It's just exciting when you can see so many variety a variety of so many good players. You've got Riddler, Charlie, Adrian. I've, I've probably left out a ton of players, but 
ones that just come to mind quickly. Fantastic shot by James there. It was a great Played the cue ball in the perfect spot, really. Uh, but you're right, Chris. And uh, snooker in Australia is in a good spot. Got a lot of young players as well. As the, you know, you got the older, more experienced players who are coming back. But you've got a really good crop of young juniors. I always love seeing that in every sport. The battle of the new, the new age players coming through, challenging the old. I always love seeing that. It's interesting to see in every sport when they break through. When you've got your your Federer's, your Nadal's, your Djokovic's, or whether it be in golf, whether it be in snooker. And you've got the new age challenging the, um, it's always good to see. There's a bit of friendly banter going on in the comment section as well. <laughs> Vinny, your home break is safe now. <laughs> For this frame. <laughs> frame this one but where those two reds are well, Matthew opens them up there plays it a bit too too strong I'm sure James is going to take this red on in the middle now and uh, the only thing is whether he's going to kiss that brown or not or the cue ball I can't really tell from the angle we've got whether he's going to miss that brown or maybe if he plays it with a bit extra pace he'll, he'll come back down the table for the black. Oh, it's no, in, it's nowhere, well. nowhere near it. So he's on. He's nicely onto the blue. He's played it well. That was a nice pot. And if he gets this cannon right, he's he can score quite a few from here. I'm not sure, yeah, that was the right shot, really. Um, just didn't look like, because of the line of reds, didn't look like uh, the right moment to go into them. I just had a question. Do you think you should start, we should start to have table heated? The table's heated. It's a good question. Um, it would always help, but w do I see that happening in the immediate future? Probably not, but um, it would definitely make their conditions even nicer so good question and hopefully we see that in the, in, in the near future I, I'm sure every player would love that I think Matthew's taking this red on. He's trying to drop this red in the middle. This is a tough shot. Yeah, very difficult. That's a very tough shot. I'm, I'm surprised he took that on because he had the red on the side rail to play safe off. If you miss that too, you're leaving a great opportunity for James to get back into this frame. Mm. Not that he's far behind, but still 26 points leads. It's a, it's a good lead. Better than nothing. You feel this is crunch time for James now. He's got to get back in this frame, score a few. I think you'll definitely think about that red if he if he knocks a few in here. Just staying for brown, I think, or green. Uh, I think we'll see the the brown. I don't even know if it's on that green. Doesn't look like it from here.
wow, this is tough. This 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 is not easy. This I wouldn't want to be James here going for this spot. Yeah, against the nap. This is uh, he's got to play pretty slow as well. It's obviously. quite missable. So a big shot coming up for James here. No he's problem. He's he's been a not little on. He's not on the lucky. green. He hasn't hit the bottom of that red, but he's not on the green. But I Brandon think he might have a nice pot on this brown to run through and get amongst those reds. Well, another key shot. While he's scrolling back, he's going to try and screw back onto that red. That was a that was a tough shot. I expected him to get it, but it's that's not an easy shot in the center. Just scrolling back off the cushion with a bit of side, but um, another comment. Good to see the Tassie boys doing well. That's true. I think we're going to see Matthew take this on. I think it's going to be a Chinese, uh, yeah, Chinese snooker behind on on the brown there. Just it's too risky to go for, isn't it? Just leave that white heart up on that brown. Keep him under pressure. Send the red down the other end. Um, he's I'm not sure what happened there. I don't. I don't. I don't I'm not sure what he's trying to do there, but I, I know he will absolutely live it with the outcome. And I think James will be very surprised he's back at the table with such an opportunity. Possi possibly a bit of fatigue coming into it now, Chris, you know, a few mistakes. I mean, it's 20 past nine, so we we were here at 9 a.m. this morning. That's we, 12. And that's when we started. So competitive snooker. I never look at this. It's people. Yeah. It's, it's a long thing. I, I well, did, James yeah. has definitely had the easier, uh, you know, table time-wise. James has had a lot less time on the table. Yeah, I was going to clarify that because yeah. like easier players-wise, definitely he had as hard as they get, but. But definitely Matthew, Matthew's had like not many breaks in between matches, so he's he's close to 12 hours on the table. It is such a long time when you consider you, you're at work or eight to eight hours or something to be competing in an event for 12 hours pretty much straight. Mentally and physically, that's exhausting. So yeah, when you're working in millimetres, you're working in millimetres in this game, it's a lot of concentration, so... So it's it's, it's it important is, uh, for to note that because it's yeah when we're in an event people might play 12, 13, 14 hours it's it's a big day. I played in poker events that that go for hours like that and you've got to, every decision you've got to concentrate. It's it's very taxing on your mind and physically. He's um is miss that Jordan. So there's twenty six to thirty two, and. Yeah, as you're right, there might be a bit of fatigue here kicking in by both players. Chuck a bit of pressure in there as well, being the final, and you'll see a few missed balls. Matthew pots that red along the cushion nicely onto the blue. Yeah, he couldn't ask to be better on the blue, really. Not sure if he's trying to float a cannon here on the bottom red. No. He's, he's going to be disappointed, but it's... 
I was surprised he played it that way. Yeah, I thought, yeah. I thought he was going to play it slower and just try and float into the bottom red. But, uh, you, you often see the, yeah. the white ball going in. When you hit that half ball, the white, it tends to, to go into the top, one of the top corner pockets. So it's, you see that more often than you would think. So off two cushions now for the black. All right, so I think there's, a whistle too there's two on. points in it now. James on a break of one, and two fairly easy reds here if he can um, build up a bit of a lead. Just cute that well. He's got another red on his on the side rail, which is on his good side, being a left-hander, so a very good opportunity for James here. You know, I'm very excited to see Steve, whoever wins this event, coming down to the Classic. If the winner happens to be the same, they can enter the Masters with an opportunity to win the third event and a $10,000 bonus. So imagine winning that event as well. That's 14000 24000 by the second. 17, which is 41, over $50,000 in three first prize winnings. That's, a pr that's not too bad. So I'm very keen to see how the winner of this goes in the Classic. I hope that hope whoever wins it wins both of them. Goes into the Masters with... Um, it's a big, more. big, big ask with the quality of players we have in Australia, but nothing's impossible, Chris. I so. love people dominating, so for me it's um, people like the underdog or swapping winners. I love people dominating their sport or their field or their profession. I, I love that. So James now 22 points in front. He's been very handy with the rest of the tournament. Yeah. He's, you know, well, that's he's, that's that's a nice shot with the rest. I've seen um, him play so many shots with the jigger in this event, and I don't even recall him missing one. And he's, he's he's quite handy with it with the rest, James. So James is 23 in front. So this black and the last red to leave Matthew needing snookers. This is the black off the spot. Unexpected. 23 points in front. That's well, the good, th good thing for James is this isn't easy because the green, I don't think that green goes. So. He's got the pink semi safe, so black's not in the best position. So. Tried to screw the He's gonna cue ball back for blue there. He's going to give James a, James a shot. This is a tough shot, but still it's a shot. Um, I didn't think he could reach it. Or can he? No. Probably Kelvin Small will reach this shot. <laughs> he can probably pass a foot more. Where's this red going to end up? I think it's, uh, it's going to be spot quite safe. Much. Almost spotted. I think Matthew has the advantage now. He's got control of the frame with a good safety here. Play the half ball then off and go top of the table. Just going to dump the red up here. Yeah, I'd be thinking check side and leave behind the pink. Leave the cue ball behind the pink and the check side's going to make the red sort of go... Square up a bit. It's sort of going to help you get the snooker. No. No, that's a smart shot. He's opened up the green now, so... Actually a great shot. That's a very that's smart a very shot. very smart shot, yeah. So now what, one mistake from James and the, that clearance is on. Just under 200 viewers at the moment. Let's see if we can push it to 250 or 300. I think we will. Just 
just a containing safety there for James. You just look the white behind the pink here. Yeah, I think he'll be snookered after this shot. It's, um, yeah, white comes off the cushion, not by much. White, the red, sorry. It's quarter ball down. Oh, I thought he was going to go behind the pink there, but. Oh, he's pretty much um, okay on that. He can see a full ball, so he's got a chance to play a good safety here, possibly snooker him. Most Just gone for the object ball safety. Most important part to keep the object ball safe, which he's managed to do. Possible uh, shot to nothing here. Back double. Possible. Let's check side. Bring the white up. If you maybe, the maybe, maybe the red's a bit too far down. <coughs> I think you have to put too much speed in the danger. Yeah, I think Matthew's trying to punch this around two cushions and leave the red on the main plate. It's going He's close to that in. middle. He's got it in. No. Oh, wow. Um, He's well, definitely you know James has taken, taken this, on. this on all day long, but it's a tough shot. Yeah, he'll be bridging from the um, leather of the pocket here, so... I expect him to get it, though. Oh. Well done, Chris. Good prediction there. That's That was a pressure shot, really, because sort of type of shot he's probably going to stick Matthew up if he misses. So. Very good under pressure. I've seen him play those shots so often. He just hit it centre of the pocket and just great point. And he's, yep, behind the blue. Yep, Jeez, I'm, make it. I'm, a bit, he's I'm a bit surprised he took the green there, James. I, I don't know if he's tired or not. But Dead weight against the nap, is that what you're referring to? No, but if he takes the pink, Matthew needs snookers. I know he has to get the... I didn't see the score, 27. He yeah. has to get the long tackle out, but he's still got to pop this yellow now. I didn't I didn't see the 27 difference. I know, being a left-hander, he probably didn't fancy getting the extension out, but still, I think, you know, cash that pink in. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see that, actually. I was, wasn't paying attention to this 27, exactly the difference, but... Where's the, where's the, yep, he's left it over the hole here. So it's 27 obviously to tie, but yeah, it's a big difference, those three points in that case, isn't it? So Matthew's played that yellow perfectly. Yeah, he's landed. He couldn't have really pretty much put that better with your hand. That's um. So yeah. just pink to black. The uh, position from blue to pink is just vital here. Just get a nice angle on this pink, and we're going to see a respot of black here. the speed on this a bit short but shouldn't be a problem just scrub the table yeah look there's still a lot to do here but he's just gonna screw up the right hand side land on the pink actually a very similar well, blue that similar blue but on the other side that Joel was had, had against him a bit closer up that he he played a li little bit slow and just missed it but this cloth is that playing that 
that nice that you don't really have to bash this. It's just the killing shot, really. Just nice and smooth. Just like that. Down she comes and... Yep. Has he got the angle, though? It looks a bit straight to me. It doesn't so look like he's got it. This is a... This is... You're playing this with the rest. Yeah. It's almost dead straight. The black's tough. I mean, he has to screw the cue ball back past where the cue ball is at the moment to sort of contemplate taking the black on. Because if you finish short of that, then then you try and clip that black in. You, you, you're in offside. And it's just a horrible shot anyway. It's, a, it's such a tough shot. But if you, if you can screw back past the middle, then you probably think about taking that black on. I don't know. It's not an envious clip position to be in for a clearance. But the consolation plates 1 0 to Steve Donahoe at the moment. They're in the second frame now. Hasn't taken the pink. Yeah, wow. Too much risk, but yeah. Well, I think he thought, yeah, I could stun the pink in and leave myself a tricky safety on the black. So but do you catch and then play the black around the around the table? The safety was tough, so I think he just thought, yeah, just play a solid safety and just go wait for a mistake from James. Just going back to the. Um, Consolation play. I used to play juniors, Steve Donahue's improved a lot through the roof and good to see. He's, he's caught it a bit thin, Chris, but I think he's got away with it. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty safe, Matthew's not taking that on. What do you do here? Double the pink back, black uh, back to the opposite side cushion. And then you're sort of leaving James a double. It's, 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 I, 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 yeah, I don't know. I, the containing shot. What else is there? What are your options here? Your, the, what your shot you said. I mean, you're asking for trouble if you leave the pink on the black cush. You're asking for a snooker behind the black. It's it's tricky, but I'm sure he'll figure it out. This is where running side, quite you know, quarter ball pink running side. I thought that two too, cushions. But it's, it's it's it can go so wrong. Yeah, that's the hard part of that shot. It can go so wrong. That was that was that's a tough shot. He's he's ugh, he's he's left him a. I don't know. He's going to go for it. No? Yeah. Where's that cue ball? Is he going to get the black off? No. He's got the black off. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh dear. I still love oh, that. That's, should never have been anywhere near the black there. He's kind of got a free shot at this. If he misses it and he undercuts it, he's going to It's just whether he, can, whether he can get through to the middle of the white. I think he can. But I think he can, yeah. He's, he's got you quite a lot can, of yeah. yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of the white. Yeah, looks like he's taking it on. He's basically had a free shot at that. He's... Yeah. He's, so wow. I think I know what's going to happen now. Well, no. I think he's playing safe. If he was going to take it on, he'd be down already. But Play it here off two cushions and land it where the main plate is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, it's just, a, it's an easy game, really. Oh dear. That's, oh my god. Um, so it's, we both just, just drop the pink in, Chris, that's all. Look, to be honest, this it was an easy shot for the frame. <laughs> <laughs> James just gets to <laughs> We're calling what safety James gets that knocks you to wall off you go. That's <laughs> him. That's Bobo at his finest man, I'll tell you. I say nonchalant gets up. Goes you made a lot of mistakes <laughs> in that frame. To just get down and back yourself and just drop that pink in is is it's um uh. 
it's um, it's quite remarkable, really. To that's a that's a sign of a good temperament, it's I think. To put Kurt all that Dunham, behind you. Kurt Dunham, sixty-one in sixty-one to one on the second frame. Um, Steve Dunham, one yeah. nil. Oh well, late night drama at the commercial club in Aubrey. To all, how's my prediction going, Chris? I think someone's, you we're know, we're both right. We're, at this we're both got an opportunity here. You know what? It's um, for a friendly wager, Steve. You want me to sponsor this next year if I lose the wager? Is that Just what you're going to offer? Twenty-five. 25 <laughs> We want to get a 200 grand in four years, so that's probably why we can do it. Um, I, I've had a, I've had a few. Uh, Kurt's, uh, sorry, Chris. Kurt's um, leveled the match now in the consolation plate because he was 60 ahead I before this break, so he's, he's on 10, I think. I want to address. No, seven. Sorry. I've had a few questions. Um, is this event going to be here next year? I can't confirm that it's going to be here next year, but I can say that I have had some positive meetings and it's looking very likely that it's going to be here and it's going to be even bigger. So you're, you're here very shortly, how that, how that pans out. One thing I do want to mention, we have raised just shy of $4,000 for charity, $3,000 to, to um, the White Women Foundation, 1000 to the hospice, the local hospice, and Reventon's donating a further 2000 So $6,000 in total, just under, for charity. So what a big achievement for Australian snookers. Um, that's something that makes me very happy, donating and putting our sport in such a great light. Nice break off from James. Just giving Matthew the one option. I think he would just Dump the cue ball into the black cushion. Um, look, so we've had some great uh, comments on that shot that James put on the pink. Wow, what a shot. One of my personal favourites as well. It's his bread and butter shot. Which um, <laughs> definitely, I don't know about that, but Morris, that's uh, very true, my friend. I think overall... Lovely shot, James. Great. Very good. I, overall, they'll be quite happy with the two-all outcome here, with the chances that they've had and missed and taken advantage of. I think it's a pretty fair scoreline at this point. Yep. Yep. No one's dominated the match at all. They've both played very well, but it's been very even. I mean, it's very difficult in a tournament. Very rare you see someone... Yeah. That's a uh, great shot by Matt. That's a fantastic yeah. shot. Yeah. What were we going to say, Steve? about dominating well you're talking about you know this is their fourth match of the day these guys so it's very 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 difficult you know to stay in to stay in the same venue all day it's play four fantastic. matches and keep the quality right up there all day so there has to be mistakes there has to be drama at this late stage of the day with such so much at stake um, so stay ch stay tuned, folks, because uh, I'm expecting some some more drama. There's already been heaps in this tournament. We've had some uh, incredible three-two black ball finishes. I think I counted probably four or five of them, and um, I'm sure there's more more to unfold in this match. I think he's left this red. Yeah, not hard enough. So that red's floated to the corner. The uh, good thing for James is I think it's quite straight. So I'm not sure if Matthew can force this out and uh, get some sort of position on that pink. I th think the cue ball's going into the jaws, but it's hard to say. He might, he might have a bit of angle, so. Missed the pot. Has he done any damage? Well, that's that's just a left-hander's dream, this shot, so a bit unlucky for the red to kiss that red and set James up for this uh, pretty easy starter. 
He just stuns past this red. He's nicely onto the black. Gets the black off the, on the spot. Plays these first couple of shots right. It could turn into a nice chance. Yeah, was the reds are there. They're in a good position for a big break. He's under hit that side, man. Well, I'm surprised he did that. I thought he'd stay on the red on the rail, but he's not far enough. I don't know if he can run through, push through this red. If he can't, then he was probably going to have to screw off and or play through for the pink. If oh, he, he, can't, he can't. He can't run through and stay on the black here. He's got the pink there, though. Yeah. Well, even better. Reds everywhere, and. Uh, that's a very good shot. Yeah. Stayed down, hit it, hit through the ball well. He's still making it hard work for us here on the commentary. Oh, has he overhit that? Has no, he gone too far? No, I think he's fine. No, he's okay. Yeah. He's, he's, he's the, the reds are absolutely beautiful here. Yeah, and no. all. Nice little stun up for the blue here. Uh, he probably would have liked to be a bit straighter on this blue. Um, maybe he can soft screw and uh, hold for these reds. Just cannon the one there. Just in what the was he just going to hold there? He's just floating through for this one into the middle. Yeah. That's a funny comment. James casual miss for the destroy. He just knocked the pink gun up, walks back. He's very nonchalant the way he plays. Similar, very similar to Williams, Mark Williams style. Very casual, his approach towards the table, his demeanor. And laid back, just gets down, just plays the shot. Very good, good ability to be able to do that and not show much emotion on such a crucial point in the match. You know, I think he should be in the Guinness R Book of Records for uh, never ever doing a fist pump, Chris. <laughs> That's fine. I've never seen. I've him never do seen him do a fist pump or react or anything. I think I have either, actually. So that's that's a good Mick <laughs> Mick Boyne. That's that's a very good call, I think. <laughs> that's funny. His opponent, on the other hand, <laughs> <laughs> just different styles. But you know what? That's that's what makes he's the sport interesting. He's taking his plant on. Oh, wow. He's He's now the plant, and he's on the blue perfectly. Wow. Go back to your point. There was a bit of work there. Those two reds were, uh, were a little few, bit apart. few inches apart. So it's going back well, to it, you know, he's had a bit of luck to finish on that. He, he wasn't, you yeah, know, he lost the white there a bit. So Going back to your point, it's, it, that's what makes the sport so exciting to watch all sports, having the different, different sort of characters. personalities yeah. and characters. Absolutely. Everybody loves... Um, a gentleman, everyone loves someone that heats it up a bit. It's it's good to mix it up and it's good for the sport. It's exciting. So I love seeing personality, different personalities at the table. Oh, that's, you know, I think that's, that shot's, that's fatigue kicking in, I think. And that's... Yeah, not, not, not comfortable as well. It's on his, you know, being a left hand on his sort of <coughs> bit of fatigue and not, yeah. Didn't seem comfy on that shot. Yeah, so I'm just. He's not. Has he left anything? I don't is think is he there a path? The middle? No, he can. He's, he's looking at he it. Can he get down to it? So, d just going back on some comments, there there is people watching, but the room's quite big, so they're scattered and spread out. He's, he's Matthew's missed, missed that. that. Yeah, yeah, I actually think there's. There's a lot of fatigue kicking in here. The boys um, they has have to, to has really to dig be. deep here. It has to be, Chris, at this stage, you know, like I know long, it's a big event. Day. There's a lot long of money, day. but 13 hours straight. So the boys are going to have to dig deep here, and if they're going to want to be, be the inaugural winner. Uh, James, with the 33-point advantage, has he come far enough on the blue? He hasn't. So He's going to play the yellow then, no? It is his right side. Being yeah. a left hander, so. Position's tough. 
He's running through off two cushions here. It, this requires good queuing. Now, sorry, people watching, I can't tell you if he's on this red. I think I think he might be. Well, the way he's looking at it, he's on it. Oh no. Yeah, no, he's on the red. Looks like he's just going to st stun through, stay on the pink. He's landed perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. I've just got handed three strawberry Fredo frogs, which are my favourite. <laughs> Well, James is in, in great shape here. It's just a few little... Doesn't have to move the cue ball very far at all now. Just a few soft stuns and screws here. Just concentrate on the pink. It's looking like a um, free two-step. I know he's got a bit of work to do, but I think he closes the frame out here. Yeah, he's looking good for 3-2 here. Not the best of shots. I think he's hampered a little bit with that red that's on the, on the side rail, so that's going to make his... He's bridging a bit awkward. Doesn't have to do too much though. If he runs through it, he's got the red on yeah. the opposite pocket. Yeah. So he's just floating this in. Yes, that's. Doesn't have to do nothing too fancy, does he? Center pocket on the red. Dave, I can confirm the commentator did have something to eat. I'm sorry, I just bit a strawberry Fredo frog. Trying to keep the energy levels up. So this black, one more red, 4-3, uh, sorry, 3-2. Yeah, so it's... There's a question there by <laughs> Sam. Sam Malcolm. Can people spectate yeah. these events in person? Did we answer that? Yes, we did. We did, so Basically, we said there's about <laughs> 50 people that spread out. We answered that one too. Thank you, Dave. LOL and caption, capitals. Thank you, sir. One thing I was saying to Steve. Well, is this is interesting. Sorry, Chris. No, no, go on, go on. There's a problem there. The black. What happens in this situation? For those of you that, who don't know, the black goes as close to the red, without touching. But there's, a, because of the spot, it can't be spotted close enough. So, both players have agreed the red goes anyway. So, the black wasn't actually in the correct position, but. As long as it's closer to the spot in the direct line, it's fine. The red would have been on anyway because it was closer to the left yep. hand of the pocket. So, yep. um, James would want to make sure to pot as many as he can here to not get Matthew back at the table. So I can yep. go into the seventh frame. Yeah. It's into the sixth frame with the momentum and not not lose. Yeah. He's got any, it's looking like he's going to do that too. I'm sure Matthew's not going to... He'll concede after whatever happens now, but... Yeah, so James looking pretty calm. As usual. As usual. That doesn't matter. 81 to nil. There's no coming back from there. So <coughs> on to the 
6 frame. Yeah, Matthew did concede, so it's the 6 frame. James leads 3 frames to 2. Is he going to be the inaugural 2016 <laughs> Masters Champion and the inaugural International Commercial Club Champion 2019? Now, I was actually telling George, who's doing the photography, I'm creating a very special poster which is going to go from triple crown event to triple crown event, which will have a photo of the three inaugural winners. One of them's James, the other one's Aaron. The next one will be the winner of this. And I said to George, if James happens to win it, we're putting two photos of him with the caption of what it is. If not, it will be Matthew, James and Aaron. And that, that poster will go to every Triple Crown event. So, it's a bit of a feather in your cap to win two of the three inaugural events of this. Such a big calibre. And in the consolation plate as well, final. It's looking pretty tight, it's one all. Final score 4-2, James is the prediction. VS the Bulldog. Yes, Jimmy, come on James. There's a lot of lot of um comments coming through now. Over two hundred views, two hundred and thirteen people watching now. Let's see if we can get it to two fifty guys. Okay, so another very good break off by Matthew, but I think James can pot this red. No, hasn't taken it on. But I think he's left the red over the middle. So Matthew with the first chance in the sixth frame. Just the problem with this shot is where is that cue ball going to run? Is it going to run into the brown or is it missing the brown? That angle looks like it's going to pass it. It's going to pass it? Yeah. So he'll he'll be guaranteed. If he pots this, he'll be to guaranteed be blue, yeah. to be on something. See, it would have would have passed quite comfortably. He's under pressure here, though. He can't afford too many more mistakes. Bit lucky there, really, not to leave anything um, for James. Unless he can get through the red, that red. I'm thinking he's snookered by the blue, but... Through the winning line there, he's still having a, a crack, Jimmy. Pretty risky shot to take on. But nice example of Matthew's touch there. Just screwed in nicely behind the yellow. And uh, quite dangerous, really, because... There isn't too many positions where James can leave the cue ball safe. Come around to have a look. Slight swerve. Yep, I just left that safe. Well worked out. I've got a, I've got a feeling he's going to be behind the yellow again, though.
sorts of trouble. We're on to frame three of the consolation plate final between Steve Donahoe and Kurt Dunham. Steve Donahoe's got a 30 point lead at the moment. Just a little tickle. He knew he was hitting it that fine, and look at the judgment of pace there. That's a great shot. That is a ripper. Um, it's officially 10 o'clock. We have gone 14 <laughs> hours. That's, yeah, that's a tough day. That's... Um, Nothing like a long, hard day to work. Matthew appreciates that. Yeah, he tapped the table and said, well, it. yeah. It's not happy internally, but yeah. he appreciates it. Well, from the position he was, you know, hard up on that jaw of the yellow pocket to to put the cue ball there, that's very, very difficult. And Steve, watching your brother play, obviously, you see he's having a tough run. To see how well he's produced in this event, you've got to be very proud of how he's handled the pressure. Especially in the quarterfinal, I was very proud of him. He's <laughs> 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 been a very good player, mate. He's <laughs> Keep it in the family still. So. He followed that up, though, so. Uh, that's a lovely pot. That's a lovely pot. I'm them all times. He said to me, I'm not letting no old timer beat me. He said, I'm only kid. I read his interview, his, his player profile on the Oceana. He listed two of his toughest players, and one of them obviously was you, so you know the respect he's got, that he would have been happy to get one on here. No, he's been in great touch. I, um, I went out for lunch, actually, after uh, James beat me in the quarterfinal, and I thought I'll have something to eat because I didn't eat, I didn't eat earlier. Um, had a very short break from my last 16 to the quarterfinal, so I didn't get to eat. So okay, I went, did you play in the 16th then? I went for lunch, sorry. I went for lunch, came back hoping to uh, catch the last bit of James and Sean play and uh, it was all over. 3-0, so... And it was a quick match. I've been watching a few of Sean's matches and uh, he, he looked in really good touch this tournament, so um, to do that to Sean, yeah, obviously just carried on playing well. All day, so. Who did you play in the 16, sir? I played Rob Elsley in the 16. Very good player from Newcastle, Rob. He, uh, very hard to beat. He represented Australia for the first time last, last year and acquitted himself very, very well in the World Championships. I heard he's improved a lot. I've, uh, yeah. I, was, I haven't been playing for years, but I heard he's improved a lot and he's doing, he's going well in tournaments. And he's uh, also another good friend and a, and a good person to hang around with and have a laugh with as well yeah. at events. So yeah, some cracking matches in this tournament. Just to give you a few details, it was Sean Dallas had a match in the last 32 against Adam Waller. I actually walked out because he needed two snookers in the deciding frame. And then I, oh my God, really? One. Caught that way too thick and fluked the red. And he's um, got a nice opportunity here, Matthew. Yeah, I walked out. Sean Dallitz was uh, needing two snookers, and uh, then I saw Sean later, and he looked pretty happy, and I thought, what's going on there? Got, he got his snookers and one on the black, so... Uh, 
that's uh, what's good for him, but sickening for his opponent. That wouldn't be a nice position to lose from. Uh, Josh Gorski, another good, worth a good mention there. He had a fantastic tournament. He um, secured that very well. Had a very tough draw. He had to play Dino Kane first match. Uh, beat Dean 3-1, and then played Charlie Chafe second match, and beat Charlie 3-1, I think. Oh. He lost to Rob Elsley next, but yeah. yeah he's a tough first second round with a, with a field of 107 players. It's probably the toughest first two rounds that any player would have had. Well, that's, that's what you've done, Chris, with your uh, sponsorship. You've, you've created this, really. There was no easy draws, and there were some very, very difficult draws. Good to hear. And I never mentioned Josh before. Obviously, he's another one of our great players and tournament contenders. There's so many of them. There's 10, 10 12 potential winners. So it's, it's good to see. So that's um, that, that bit of fortune's given him a good, p given him a good chance now to score some points in this um, sixth frame. Fantastic to see uh, his brother as well, Ben playing. Ben's a lovely cueist and. Um, He's got a lot of potential as well, so. And Margaret was in the event too, so thank you to all the Gorski family. They had four players in the event, plus obviously family and relatives, so thank you. Margaret, Stan, Ben and Josh, another one of, another great Australian playing family, so thanks to the Gorskis for supporting this event. few loose threads obviously the black's not in the spot but the pink goes in the opposite um, corner pocket so it's got a few to work with obviously the blue's available as well so it's um, given him an opportunity to score a few points here in this sixth frame hello Adrian watching just come online as well yeah. He's under hit that there, so he's, he's gonna have to play the the blue in and out. He's You think maybe he might have been trying to get on the pink there? I'm not sure. Because he's kind of landed smack back in the middle. Mm. Well he's got work to do here. He had more margin for error for the blue if he played, but I'm not sure what he went for. There's work to do here. Choosing to screw here. Put the yellow off the spot so it makes it a little bit easier. Screw with running side. Yeah, so it makes a big difference when you haven't got one of those colours on the spots, to be honest. And he's kind of in pretty good shape, really. He's got this red into the corner. <laughs> sort of float this in, get on the blue. So one one good shot here. If he pots this, he'll be in um, back in prime position. He's missed that. So he's a bit disappointed there, but oh, yeah, did he miss that red? Shot to nothing. Greg Jenkins joining us. Thank you for joining us, mate. And we've also got the Frankston RSL Snooker Clubs and Billiards watching. Thank you. Always play the 147 event there, so thanks for supporting our great game and thanks for watching as well. I believe uh, Kurt won that recently, didn't he? Yeah. He did, yes. Played very well. I love the concept of the 147 event, so I do that for the Masters, and it's always fun and entertaining. And he's he's left that there. So this is not sure for James where, where he was playing the cue ball there. I thought he just stun off two cushions and stay on the pink, but went down the table. So 
This is quite nice actually, he gets low on the blue here, he can do what he wants really, he can... Are those two reds on there on the spot, they're not on are they? They don't look like it. They're not on, but yeah, yeah he could do what he wants here, he could choose to go into him, play for that loose red. Sometimes hard to see from these angles. He's just floating this down, I think. I think... Is he gone too far? I, I think he's alright. Maybe develop a red. He's kissing in. He's kissing into the red, isn't he? Yeah, he can run through. Yeah, he's def I think he's definitely kissing into it. But he can run through, develop the reds. He can screw back. He's got a few options. He's gonna have to develop something anyway. Oh, oh. okay. He's um, well, picking him off. A bit like before, really. He can just stay around the pink here and. I think he screwed that a bit too much. So he might have to screw straight back for the blue here. He's got no angle as he's straight. Or he's under it. Looks very relaxed though, doesn't he? Let's see, he hasn't got into that at all. So it's landed now we're here, play the the brown and put the white behind the yellow. Yeah, that's the shot. Just off two cushions and tuck tucked up behind it. Not hard enough. Oh, he's got the brown too, but, but he's maybe it is hard enough. I, I think it's a bit hard to tell for us. I think you can see it still. I'm pretty sure he can, but he was about three inches away from putting him in so much trouble there. Yeah, I think you'd be upset with that having such a big target to land behind that yellow. You can definitely see that. Well, the thing is, he's going to open things up here. Oh. Straight into the red on the cush, and he's got the red over the hole. So if he can... So S Steve just won the third frame now. Steve Donahue in the consolation played against Kurt. He's 2-1 up now in the best of five. And... Um, so James is, well, well, he's playing it with top, so he's got angle. Go for the pink or the bl or blue. I thought he was going to come off too, but I couldn't couldn't see where it was going. That's a land oh, of the best there. He's just, yeah, he's in he's in between there, isn't he? Um, I don't know if he can. He's got a shot at the blue. Uh, I don't know if he snookered from the um, I don't angle think we've got. I don't think you can see the blue. He's going for this trick. This, this is, is a tough shot. This is tricky. Yeah. This is very Quite tricky. Quite a walk back into a blind pocket in the center. That's a very missable shot. But he's, he's been fortunate with it, with the he's, result. There. He's got away with it, yeah. It could have landed so much better, but... He's developed the black. And he's uh, got away with this, so... One thing I think we've... we've but we've that's we've definitely opened the frame up now, so... We know Matthew's for sure. got to put in a real good safety here. He's definitely going for it. Well, if he's had a few shots to go for the match, James is he's definitely he's going to go for full attack, which you expect, I guess, from James. Sitting at 220 viewers, guys. Let's see if we can get it to 250. He's played it as a shot to nothing, and yeah, he's played it as a good weight there. So he's tempting James possibly with that red. He's got, he's got work to do with the cue ball. Maybe that's why he's left him this one. Is he going to go for it? James is probably going to go for it. 
He's, yep. he's gone. Any yep. opportunity for the match, James is going to hit it pretty much. And he's oh, very fortunate. Have a look at that. Have a look at that. He's, look yeah. at this. He's, oh. He couldn't have played a better safety if he tried. It's, it was very fortunate for that red to kiss back and land there. Yeah. I think towel all over the face. The, you know, the, the fatigue. That's a long day. He, the, even though the general wants both to come off the 30 Both hours. of them. You know. Tell you what, the, the, that's how you see the luck always evens out. Matt was fortunate in the first shot, but now... Obviously, James has returned the favour there. Yeah, he's fluked that first red to get off that to his 18-point start, so, yeah, it does even up. And there, he nicked it at quarter ball. If he hits that half ball, he's leaving him that red, so... This is a nice opportunity, you know, but he's taken the red on. I was going to say, he's got a good opportunity to get behind the yellow here, but he's having a go at it. He's just taken, if, he, if the match is there, James is going for it. Yeah. But he's left Matthew a beautiful chance here. Balls are nice. So he pots this. He can pots this. He's, he's 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 right in. There's nothing hard there really. <coughs> Everything's hard at this stage of the tournament. But one good positional shot on the pink here, and uh, we could be looking at three or. a nice spot by Matthew. Yeah, so it's, it's looking like your prediction might come true, Steve. And these are both uh, players that I grew up with playing juniors with, along with Neil as well. So it's, it's good, to, good to see them still competing and doing really well in events. James is actually the youngest one of, out of all of us. I think he's a little bit older than Ridley, if I book, out of our group. We had a question who's commentating. It's Steve Mishford and Chris Christoffi. Thanks for joining us. Break goes to 14, 15, sorry. Has he landed slightly awkward here? I, don't, I think he's, he's like I think a bit higher than, than it looks here, so he can't get on that red because he's taking so much time on it. Yeah. He has to land low on it and may possibly go away from the black. No? I'm not sure why it took so long about that. No, he's okay. Um, he's on the red. I think he can stay on the black. I don't think he has to go away, so... Just a question of these last two reds, I'm not sure. Oh, I definitely really? didn't expect that, to be honest, but the break is, dies on, stops on 22. See, that was the problem I when I said I'm not sure he has to go away. He to I think he, too much. he tried to pinch the pocket there to try and hold it, because the two reds are rolling on into so the same pocket. That, that makes sense, because you took a while on that shot. Yeah.
Um, well, this this looks easy, but he has to really get the cue ball right. See, he's he might have gone too far, so he has to play a cannon here, and uh, I think I think he's going into them. He's going into the red, so needs a little bit of needs to hit him right on the button here to Welcome. open things up. Sam, um, yeah, me and Steve are doing well. Thanks for your comments, Ryan. Tables are running better than ever, apparently, according to all the players. Hope you're well, mate, and you're doing well overseas. Keep practicing hard, mate. We might see you at the Masters. And he's played that well. So he's, he's in good nick here. I would suggest he's going to take the top red first. Thank you, Mel, for your comments. Adrian and Jay. A little bit short, I think. He's he's quite straight on this on this black, so just all about judging the weight of this and getting a nice angle on this last red. And the last time that man pulled off that great clearance in the yeah. in the frame, his his yeah. his history gonna repeat itself. So he's eight points behind. <laughs> He's finished a bit straight on this. He has to run through off two cushions, so... Yeah, the pressure's on. This requires good queuing. The balls are in a great position. Clean as always. So. He's um, potted it nice. He's not probably... <coughs> he would have liked to come out a bit more. But it looks quite natural to pot this black, miss the blue, nicely on the yellow. I think he's just trying to compose himself a bit. Yes, what, look, the balls are all there, but what a big moment it is for James. It's a nice shot. Didn't do anything too fancy. He's landing on the yellow. This is a key shot here. If he lands great on the green here. I fancy he takes the tournament out. Needs a fair bit of control. These tables are so quick. He's just got to really cue smoothly through the ball to... Bottom left-hand side, cue through the ball, nice and smooth. Get nicely on this green. He's played two cushions. Oh, okay. he's, he's played that well. Yeah, this is I thought it was a bit tricky to, to know, hold. To hold, it was he had to really kill a sweet. So he's at this point of the match, you probably don't want to do that shot, do you? you yeah. play that shot. He's chosen to hit through it a bit harder, and it was a good decision, really, to to land there. Play off two cushions. And he's cued that like a dream, really. That you really you cannot place like that shot better, can you? That is a massive shot, and. This is. Does he have to go up and down? I think he. Can I think hold. He, ha he has to go up and down. The way he's aiming on the oh, cue. Definitely, yeah. He's, he's under hit that. He's under hit it. He's landed kind of in the middle of both shots. He's playing it definitely in the corner, isn't he? Um, well, you want to be potting the pink, really. You don't want to just pot the blue. So. Fourteen the difference. That's right. If he pots the blue. That's a gutsy shot, dead weight. Yeah, he's dead weight. On. Dead weight. He's it's on his wrong side, but should be he should be feeling pretty good at this point. Matthew needs a snooker. So um four I tell you what, it's fourteen up. It's definitely not over, but it's what a match so far. He's put the short extension in, this changes things a bit, but just dead weight. Just trying to drop it in dead weight. Um, he's kind of got the black as back up there. And 14 up, 3 2 up, best of 7. He's, he'll take it all day long at the start of the match, so hopefully, uh, for many's sake, he can see this, but I'm not sure he can. Well, the Bulldog will go for snookers, of course. There's no quitting this he's man, so he'll continue. But he's in one at the moment, so he's got to come off the cush here and. 
Oh, I could no. see it. I could see it from the back shot. No, he could see it, yeah. He's played that well. Just a nice containing shot. I think James will try and double this dead weight, and he's got the backup snooker. That's him. Yeah. It's there. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Steve, uh, James Misford, the inaugural Reventon International Commercial Club champion and the inaugural Masters 2016. So James Misford, well done, mate. Matthew, great comeback after a year. You should be very proud of yourself, mate. Great play. Great play. Great well effort done. in this tournament to Matthew. And, uh, yeah, like you say, Chris, after a, a layoff since August, that's... Um, you know, a good 10 months off. Um, great effort. Two matches, 2-0 two down. Comes back and wins. So, looked out of the tournament in the last 32 stage and came back strong. And James, without winning a tournament for a couple of years, that's a, a hell of a way to come back and win the biggest event ever held in Australia. It's crazy. James has a knack for doing this. I think he loves the Reventon name. I think yep. you should buy an investment property or two now after that win. <laughs> well done, James. Proud of you, mate. Steve, if you join me in the presentation, this is a very special trophy. You'll all see. Please stay tuned. It's a secret I've had for six months, which will now be revealed. So please stay tuned and see the presentation. It's very important to myself personally and to Australian snooker. So 14,000, that's correct. That's drachmas. 14,000 drachmas. <laughs> I'm only kidding. That's a Aussie dollars. So... Well, thanks, Chris. Well done. Thank and you for um, your sponsorship, your, your commentary. You wait to see the bill for the commentary, Steve. It's been a pleasure, mate. Great work doing this. Thank you very much to our man, Dan, beside me. And awesome, guys, Dan. stay tuned Thank you. for the presentation. Thank you.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If you could uh, work your way down towards this end of the room, uh, we're going to do the presentation from both the uh, compilation plate event and also the main event, the That's actually the three to five round of oh, that's that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. It was the one that might be a match by the Germans. The local masters and the local masters. Yeah. Can you think up another new tournament? Yeah, we've got to rename it. Oh my goodness, look how many people are here. Oh, that's good. Yeah, 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 that's good. Yes, please. I need some. Wait down. I'm putting a point on the Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for attending the final of the Reventon Commercial Club International. Um, I don't want to say too many words, I just want to thank a few people. First of all, I would like to thank the referees, um, John Avet and the, and the crew, done a super job all week. weekend, so thank you very much. To the uh, members of the commercial club that uh, helped out with the scoring, uh, um, Peter, thank you very much, Peter Harvard and his wife, thank you very much for, their, for the consolation, the race for the dinner and organising the, 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 um, Raffle. yeah, that too. Uh, the Calcutta tickets, the ladies that sold them, the people that behind the scenes was uh, Tommy, Johnny Harvey, Doug Meredith, uh, for all those guys for their help. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. To the winners and the runners up, the people with the highest breaks, congratulations. Uh, I don't want to talk for too long, but I would like to, on behalf of the commercial club, um, thank Chris and the people with Reventon to uh, be involved with the, with the commercial club for this tournament. So thank you very much. Good on you, Chris. Good you, Chris. Yeah. But also, uh, and, and there's none here, but I would like to have a special mention to the, um, the people that work at the club. Every time we wanted something, they did it first time. So thank you very much to them as well. So I'll just hand over. Um, Chris is going to come and present all the bits and pieces, or I don't know. Okay, thank you all first. Thank you very much, Eddie. Very well done. Um, I'm uh, the president of the Victorian Business and Super Association, and uh, I've been extremely grateful for everything that's gone on this weekend. Uh, we could not have done it without the magnificent achievements and efforts by Eddie Simmons. Can I have a round of applause? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Eddie. He's done a fantastic job. Um, when we first discussed this, I thought this was a huge task, absolutely enormous, and uh, Eddie's made it seem uh, routine in, in terms of so many things that he's done. Every time there's been a problem, we just go to Eddie and say, this is what the problem is, and he's already worked out how he's gonna deal with it, etc. So we've been extremely grateful for everything that's gone on throughout this weekend. 
We're very grateful to all the players that have come along and uh, grateful to the referees, especially John Ivett, who's uh, managed the referees magnificently. And uh, thank you, John. And uh, this particular tournament uh, was very much Chris's brainchild. Uh, he came up and spoke to Jeff Duck. They agreed that this was something that they could do in conjunction. It's been a fantastic combination of uh, two groups that has produced the richest snooker tournament that we've seen in this country. And for that, we are extremely grateful. And what we see is that when you have this sort of input and you create this sort of event, it really creates an international interest. We get people coming from overseas to play in it. And we also uh, see that the sport itself is prospering, growing and developing, etc. And that's what we want to see. Dead it's right. what the commercial club want to see. It's what the BBMSA and the New South Wales Association and the Australian Billiards and Snooker Council all want to see. And it only comes about through the people brainstorming, working through the uh, initiatives that they've thought of, etc. And the work that then is done by Eddie and Tom and all the team here, etc because they've prepared a magnificent event and run it brilliantly. So uh, on behalf of the Victorian Business and Snooker Association and everybody else associated with this tournament, I'd like to uh, introduce the CEO of Reventon, Chris Christoffi. Thank you, Paul. I won't keep it too long. A year ago, I came up to meet uh, Jeff and Eddie I had an idea of running a $50,000 event. They felt all crazy. Had an idea of having 100 runners. We had 107 runners. We had a $50,000 event. It's the first one of its kind. I think it's a bit short. It's missing a zero. It should be 100,000. I think in four or five years, we're gonna get there. I'd like to thank the commercial club for not only their support in this event, but all the events they do throughout the country. This is one of our premier clubs. We're very fortunate to have it, and we hope to open some more like this in Melbourne. Um, to both the finalists, I grew up playing with them and I'm very happy to see you both in the final. Matty, you've been off for 10 months. You're a true champion to come back in the final and do what you always do and fight hard. To James, well done, mate. It's the, he was the inaugural Masters champion in 2016. He won the first Reventon match play. He came semi-finalist in the Reventon Classic and he won the first international as well. So that's a massive effort, James, well done. It also qualifies you directly into the Masters this year again, which you've played in all three events. I would like to present, obviously, the well done to the consolation plate. What a quality field. 122 was the highest break. $8,000, three grand to the winner. What a massive event. So I'm going to let Paul present, present those. And for the final of the, the final two, for Matt and for James, I'm going to call up Steve and myself to hand over a very special trophy for the inaugural winner. So I'll hand it back, the consolation plate to Paul and Owen. Go on, Chris. Thank you very much, Chris. Very well done. Ladies and gentlemen, the consolation plate has been extremely hard fought. Uh, it's been no gimme for anybody in any of the matches, etc. Uh, they've been very hard fought matches. Um, the snookers that were being laid down at the table at the end, towards the end, were just amazing in themselves. There was a great quality and so I'd like you to put your hands together for the runner-up in the Commercial Club Reventon Consolation event, Kurt Dunham. Kurt, some cash in here and a cheque as well. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. And the winner of the Commercial Club Reventon Consolation event, Steve Donahoe. Yeah. Uh, there is also a prize here for the highest break in the uh, Commercial Club Reventon Consolation event and the high break had to be a, more than 75 and it was in fact 122 by Adrian Ridley. Yay, Adrian. <laughs> Good. I'll collect it for Adrian. <laughs> 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 
Now, in the main event, uh, we were extremely privileged to have the class of field that we did, um, the highest break for the uh, Commercial Club Remington International event is a break of 129 by Vinnie Calabrese. Hey, Vinnie. And to present the winners and the runner-up, uh, could we have Steve Mifsud come forward and join Chris Christoffi, please. So we'll start with the runner-up. Um, he's coming into the classic. Uh, Next week into the billiards as favourite as he usually is. Great effort, great run after 10 months. You're a champion, mate. Well done, Matty, Matty Bolton. Congratulations, buddy. Uh, too good on the day today, mate. And um, great player, great mate, like a lot of us are. And uh, thoroughly deserved your win, mate. So congratulations and enjoy the spoils. Well done, Maddie. Um, uh, to Chris, mate, what you're doing for the game is, you know, unheralded in this country. And uh, I just hope everyone here and everyone watching and everyone involved in the sport realises how important it is to keep supporting and keep the numbers coming because it won't, right. go on, it won't go on forever unless we all do. And we've yeah. got to encourage other people and everyone to you know, keep growing the game, uh, keep things moving forward. So hopefully Chris's support continues because if it's going backwards, it might may not. Get right. Well said. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Uh, to the commercial club uh, and all the members, thank you very much for giving up your snooker room for the tournament again. Uh, the conditions are as good as I've played on in the country for a, Ten months. a long, long time. <laughs> Ten months, correct. Um, <laughs> um, the tables are absolutely magnificent, so full credit to Alcox and uh, uh, the, the you know, expensive operation to recloth ten tables, so um, sensational conditions. Uh, to Eddie, um, brilliant job as always, mate. Um, you're, you know, one of the great, great supporters of our sport. With our people, good like on you, Eddie. On you, Eddie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, to all your the referees, um, to Kim, great job in the final. Uh, all the other referees and markers and everything, uh, fantastic job. Um, and you know, I, look, uh, it was an absolute pleasure to make the final. It takes two players to make the final. It's obviously a little disappointing to lose, but after a pretty long break and feeling pretty rusty and getting out of jail twice, I felt I was a bit blessed to even be in the final. So, you know, no hard luck stories, just real pleasure to be involved in the final at such a great event. So well, thanks very much. Well, well, just before I introduce James, uh, I was going to leave it last, but I just reiterate, um, I like commercial that. club, yes. Eddie, Teresa, <laughs> Paul, George, thanks for bringing up all the signs, John, I've had all the referees, all the players, every person that came in, the paper for taking it, thank you very much. The feedback we've got is one of the best table, the tables I've ever ran in this country, so well done to George. It's Taylor. the greatest, Chris. So well done yeah. to George, Taylor, everybody right. involved. It's only going to feel better now, Steve is somewhere young. This is a very important trophy to me personally. Um, as, as you know, we've got two inaugural trophies. This one was probably equally the most special trophy to me was named after a legendary family. It's a perpetual trophy to the Mrs. family, so I can't believe that James won it seven months in the making. So, James, come through, collect the Mrs. trophy, mate.
Andy as well, please. <coughs> hey, James, take on your mate as well. <coughs> Thanks, Steve. Get it right, Georgie. It's 21,000. It's a blow tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, George. James, you want to say a few words? Um, <laughs> yeah, just a small uh, bow out to uh, Matthew. Um, Had three nil, three nil, three nil throughout the day, and I thought I was playing well. And then you play Matthew, it's like playing chess. You got to work for your chances, even though he wasn't playing maybe his best. It's um, it's it's always tough. And I think I got a bit lucky at the end there. You know, a few a few things going from my way, so just lucky to get over the line. Um, I want to thank uh, Chris and the Commercial Club, the joint sponsorship for this tournament. Um, it's always one of my favourite venues to come to and play. I've always enjoyed it. Um, George for the photos. Um, all the referees, Kim, for doing the final. Thank you. Well done to Steve Thanks, in, the, uh, in the play. Uh, that's like the proper tournament oh, on the field in that, in that tournament, so that's a big win there. Um, and Kurt for coming right around. Uh, Eddie and the crew, everyone involved, it's not just one. There's a lot there that, uh, that stay there from morning to night, you know, uh, all weekend, and the lead up to the tournament as well. So, thank you very much. Like Matthew said, the conditions were the best we've played on for a very, very long time. So, it makes it a, a lot more enjoyable to play when, when you play conditions like that. So, yeah, it was fantastic. Um, everyone just stuck around for the final as well and watched that. So. Thanks for that, and yeah, see you all next year. Oh, yeah, Judy. Uh, <laughs> last we forgot to mention Q Ball TV. Thanks to Dan Lynch. Thank you, Dan Lynch. Thank you, Dan Lynch. Thank you, Dan Lynch. Sorry, you know who you are. Thank you for helping and support this event. Next year's going to be bigger and better. Please support us. And Eddie, do you want to say anything finishing up? Paul? Chris. Yeah. Chris. Tell everybody about the classic. The Classic's in two weeks, obviously, followed by two massive billiard tournaments. So please come down and support that. It's the second of the Triple Crown events. It, it's also boasted a $10,000 first prize. The defending champion is Aaron, who will be competing in that event. And it's followed by two monster billiard events. We've got the current world champion coming, plays from India, and some of the best plays in the world. Matthew is probably defending his title for the 27th time. I'll be there. Um, Steve's there. All the players are there. Pity Gilchrist. Definitely Ronnie Cole as well. So come down and watch him, please. He'll be, he'll be at the bus. So. Well done, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hello. Tommy. Hello. Again. Uh, this was a great tournament. I want to say something. And uh, now I've seen everything, I know it. A producer, and uh, I'm going to get it live uh, every tournament now. I'm going to get TV live. It's well done, Tom. No, I'm going to get it live. Thank you. Are you coming? Um, for those of you that haven't put your head before me for the Revenant Classic in two weeks' time, I would point out to you two things. It's run over a long weekend, which means you don't have to take a week off work. Um, it's run under a format where they make up 16 groups with the 96 people who enter, and it means that you get to play a round robin event. So you have a very strong player in your group, uh, a very good player in your group. And it's a very enjoyable day to be able to play at any of the different venues on the Saturday. Thoroughly enjoy yourself. So um, get yourselves into the Revenant Classic and uh, it'll be on in two weeks' time. Thank you very much to everybody for their work here over this weekend. Thank you for the hospitality that's been shown to all of us by the citizens of Albany. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you.
Let's talk about a more prosperous tomorrow.